Change can be a challenge. In fact, few people embrace change. But think about it. Change can also be good to both people and things like Kansas Speedway. She has definitely changed, and perhaps that change will spur on the reemergence of a driver and a team who have five times mastered this thing called the chase. Do not call to come back. It might sound like a good story, but that's just a media hype job. Bell bottoms, platform shoes, Robert Downey Jr., those are comebacks. This is your place. Let's get it done today. Our boys, stick deep. But the 48 team, please. To doubt is to disrespect. We got a song to sing. He got an axe to grind. He far and wide, but still hard to find. He goes wild, wild, but he's wild for one fan. Mr. Five Time is a legend. He racks up points like frequent flyer models. So put your hands together for this girl. He doesn't just drive, he's driven. Let me go out and do my thing. He demands more than most, which is why he's got a timeshare on Victory Lane. Save me some of that champagne, boy. There are no rainy days with the 48 team. They see every race as a chance to win. This is a tank so full of belief, it would take down the battle Get that heat out of me, can't handle it. Come back? Shoot. The only thing more consistent is the Rocket Gibraltar. Because that's how Jimmy rolled. He's either coming after you, or he's gone. Just like Jimmy Johnson, we too keep coming back. Welcome to NASCAR Spring Cup Series Countdown, presented by Tire Rack. What is not back is the old Kansas Speedway. Take what you thought you knew about this one and a half mile track and throw it out the window because that's what our championship contenders have done. Brad Keselowski won a race at Kansas in 2011. About the only thing that race win might translate to today is the ability to save fuel. The points leader will start fairly deep in the field, 25th. That guy who just won't go away, that guy who's won five championships, just so happened to win this race one year ago. Jimmy Johnson will start seventh, and then there is Denny Hamlin. He is the most recent Kansas winner. When we were here in the spring, he led 32 laps and route to his second win of the season. He will start ninth. The top three title contenders, all winners here, but say it with me, it doesn't matter at this new Kansas. Throw those notebooks away. What does matter, at least for this next guy, is that he is having the best Sprint Cup Series season of his career. Man of 15 ran him down and got around him with no problem. Clint Boyer, winless in 2012. He's just a turn away from a win, but here comes Tony Stewart. Third by one, third by two. And Clint Boyer will flash past the start finish line, guys, and he'll win the Toyota St. Mark 350. Way to go, my friend. Thanks for coming over here and doing this with us, my friend. Well, here's Richmond International Raceway. Clint Boyer way out in front by some 11 seconds. It's been a breakout year for Michael Waltrip Racing, and Clint Boyer tonight is at the head of the pack. And, you know, you can't ask for a better race team. Uh, you know, MWR, my teammates, Man. everybody that's a part of this is just, uh, it's unbelievable. Denny Hamlin trying to close the gap, but it will not be enough. Clint Boyer will win the Bank of America 500. Woo! to win three times for me and, and uh, you know, everybody. Man, I love these guys. It's so much fun. Clint's third win of the year did a lot for this race team. Ultimately, Clint, did it bring you close enough to the championship leaders to beat them by Homestead? You know, uh, hopefully. <laughs> you know, a long time will tell. Five races is a lot of racing. Um, we got to get through Kansas. You know, it's it's uh, usually I look forward to Kansas. Man, I'm telling you, this is a nerve-wracking race for everybody, including I would say, first and foremost, the, the crew chiefs, they're all sweating bullets. Uh, it's going to be a strategy game you're going to have, you know, to strategize better than the next guy. You're going to have to set yourself out somehow to have the track position at the end and, more importantly, make it to the end on fuel mileage. We saw that nationwide race come down to it yesterday. Uh, the green-white checkered bit most of them. You know, uh, Kyle had the thing one coming off of four and it ran out of gas and ended up way back. I mean, that tells you just how important it is to be able to make it on a fuel mileage on, on a race like this. But uh, hopefully that, that groove will widen out. We'll be able to, to race a little bit more up there. We know it's a progressive bank racetrack. The more and more you get rubber burn into that outside groove, I think it'll start prevailing and could be the preferred line. So um, just going to have to adapt to whatever they throw at you and be ready for it. We wish you luck at your home racetrack. Clint Boyer will be our in-race reporter today. If you'd like to join the conversation, log on to ESPN.com, search in-race reporter, or tweet 
at NASCAR ESPN. Nicole? <laughs> Thank you, Dave, and welcome inside our home for the rest of the afternoon. It is the ESPN Pit Studio. I'm Nicole Briscoe alongside Rusty Wallace, Brad Doherty, and Ray Evernham. And I want to start with Clint Boyer because at this point, a season ago, he was still searching for where he was going to go this year. He was at Richard Childress Racing. When he went from RCR to Michael Waltrip Racing, is there anyone, including Clint Boyer, who thought he'd be right here right now? Oh, absolutely not. And, and I talked to Clint through the process, uh, as well as Michael Waltrip after it happened. And it was really interesting because Clint Boyer, he was becoming a linchpin over at RCR Racing. He was the guy who was heir apparent with Kevin Harvick of taking that organization back to winning championships. And when he decided to walk away from Richard Childress and to move on, it was not Michael Waltrip weight racing that, that everyone in the garage mm -hmm. thought he would end up landing at being their, their star race car driver. We thought he would go elsewhere. And when it came right down to it, after he made the decision, there was a lot of rumbling in that garage area that he had just made a career suicidal uh, decision. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I thought, looking at it, that Clint Boyer would just be a great journeyman race car driver because the Waltrip organization had gone nowhere. It was just a new startup organization that had accomplished a lot and still had a lot of pieces look and parts. Now. And look at him now. You know, when we look at Clint Boyer, you compare him to the drivers he's running against for this championship. Boyer is not Jimmy Johnson. He's not Brad Keselowski. He's not Denny Hamlin in terms of personality. In that way, he's a bit of a wild card. He's also an underdog. How does that affect the expectations that surround this 15 team? Well, no, he, he's not uh, those guys. But you wonder, is it personality or is it position in his career? Right now, he doesn't have as much experience racing at that level as, as those guys. And, and I will tell you that I had a short conversation with Clint right before the chase started at Chicago. And on that laid-back cover, inside there's a guy that really gets it. He knows what it takes to do this. He knows what he needs in his race cars. The thing I would ask, and you heard him say it last week, wow, who would have who thunk mm -hmm. it? Who would have believed it? Does he believe it enough himself? He's got to start to believe that he deserves to be here, that he can compete with those guys so his team can believe it. Even when Dave asked him about it, he just said, I don't know. But some perspective as to where we were one year ago, the eventual champion, Tony Stewart, at this point, he had won a couple of races in the chase, but he was 24 points out of the lead. Right now, Boyer's only 28 points back. No, you're right. Mathematically, he's got a shot to win this thing. I mean, it makes sense, but... Look, Tony Stewart, has, he's got so much more time behind the wheel than Clint Boyer does. Look, Boyer's a heck of a driver. Like you said, he's 20-some points back, like Stewart was. But Stewart won a championship last mm -hmm. year. Stewart's done this. Stewart's done that. And I look at this brand-new Michael Walter team that Clint Boyer's driving for, and I got a little bit of a question mark. It's like they're doing really good, but it's almost too early for them to go out and win a championship right off the bat. If you're going to compare numbers to Tony Stewart, it is. So I got a little concern about that, although there's no concern of how good a driver Clint Boyer is. He gets it done, and I really commend Michael Walter Bracing for the job they're doing out there right now. They got those cars running good. I think Mark Martin's helped that team a little bit also. But uh, back to your original question, mm -hmm. mathematically, Stewart done it. You think that Clint Boyer could do it, but he doesn't exactly. have experience as Stewart's got. All right. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion about Tony Stewart. Do you remember the guy who used to challenge NASCAR at every turn? Why ownership changed that and why that maybe made Stewart a better everything. You know, there were a lot of times I didn't understand why NASCAR did something a particular way. I think it's been a real positive thing for me as a driver to now be an owner and, and to see things from a different perspective. And Boyer, the top four points different. Keselowski, Jimmy Johnson, Hamlin, and Boyer. If you think the drivers are different, wait until you see the differences in their crew chiefs. NASCAR Sprint Cup Countdown is presented by TireRack.com. Research, buy, deliver, install. Tire Rack. Good old Tony Stewart. Now he wants us to think that he's just a simple man. A racer's racer made up of equal parts sweat, oil, and dirt. But no matter how hard he tries, we know better. We see his flaws, his talent, and his genius. We see the complicated man he really is. We see straight through the act. Straight through his smoke screen. We know this about Tony Stewart. 
or at least we hope, no one will actually question his driving ability. His qualifying, well, that's been a bit lacking this weekend. He's 12th of the 12 chasers on the grid. He will roll off 33rd. So for at least this weekend, we'll just continue to call him the driver and an owner. Those are the easy descriptions about Tony Stewart. But let me ask you this. How would you describe Stewart once you start peeling away all of the layers of his personality? I drive a race car. I own cars. I own racetracks. I'm sure if I was examined by a physician, they would say that I'm nuts because I don't know what else to do. As my career has progressed, opportunities have come that were opportunities I didn't want to let pass. And we've added and added and added. And now it's like being at Thanksgiving and seeing everything that, that's out you want to eat. So it's like filling your plate up with everything. I think it's been a real positive thing for me as a driver to now be an owner and, and to see things from a different perspective. And you know, there were a lot of times I didn't understand why NASCAR did something a particular way. If they want to script us a script and tell us where they want us to run each lap, that's fine. It's unacceptable at this level of racing to be on a tire that's that bad. Now being an owner in it, you also see it from a different side and a different angle that a lot of times makes a decision make a little more sense. And I think it's helped my relationship with NASCAR and I think it's helped me understand more of how to be a better car owner, how to be a better track owner and, and how I get a more rounded view of the sport. When you have years, you know, like last year we were with us winning the championship as a driver and as an owner, our tracks did well, our teams did well. To have all those things and when everything goes right, it's an awesome feeling. He's going to become a three-time NASCAR Sprint Cup champion. Tony Stewart wins it. It's not a good time to be around me when I'm at the racetrack because I'm focused on what I'm doing. I'm focused on what I have to do to be better. And when I'm not being a car owner at the track and watching my cars run and making sure they got everything you need, you get me at home and I'm an overgrown child. I mean, I'm just somebody that has fun. I sleep in in the morning. I, I eat cookies before I go to bed. I um, eat cold pizza straight out of the box. I don't take anything serious when I'm away from the track. In the past, I've worried so much about what people thought because it really affected me. If somebody didn't like us, I was like, why? What is it about me that you don't like? Uh, good job, guys. We gave another one away today. Great job. Finally, I looked in the mirror one night and I said, I don't know why I'm worried about what all these people think because I have to be comfortable with myself and none of those people are here at the end of the day. And, you know, the people that are closest to me were suffering because of how it affected my mood. And when you grow up as a race car driver, you want to be the hero. You want to be in that heroic role that everybody loves you and everybody respects what you do. And Dale Earnhardt Sr. was the one that kind of taught me. One day we went across the stage at Driver Introductions and him and I had to ride in the truck together. And half of the crowd booed me and half cheered. And he, and he looked at me and he goes, and put his hand on my shoulder and he goes, kid, you finally made it. And I was pretty upset about it. I'm like, I don't know why all these people are booing me. And he goes, but the thing is, 100% of them made some sort of reaction. I think from that point on, it's like you start understanding that you can't have a hero without a villain. You can't have a villain without a hero. Whatever role you're playing for a particular person, you're fulfilling that role for them. I'm just becoming more comfortable with who I am. Tony Stewart was certainly comfortable in the chase one season ago. Five wins in ten races. And while he might not be totally comfortable with what his results are so far, if you look at the numbers between Stewart's 2011 performance and the 2012 performance, they're not all that different. Obviously, the win category and the top five category is a little bit different. But the big glaring difference between that 14 team one season ago and now is a personnel change. It's Darian Grubb, the crew chief. He's no longer with the 14 team. He's with Denny Hamlin. The 14 team's crew chief is now Steve Addington. Well, yes, that, that is exactly that is right. True. It comes down to, to that one person. But, the, you know, Tony is a great driver. Tony is, is also a, a great businessman. But this year, his cars just don't have the mobility that they had last year, the ability to maneuver through traffic. Tony's really not even qualified great last year, but his cars moved forward. So whatever relationship he had with Darren Grubb that didn't work out, he's not been able to get that magic uh, working with Steve Addington to get him what he needs in those cars to move him forward. And what I think is interesting, uh, when 
when Tony has talked about Dairy and Grub, he said, you know, our relationship, as in Stuart Haas Racing, we don't have the same relationship with Hendrick Motorsports that we used to a season ago now that Grub has left our building. It, it, you would think that that would be impacting them in some way. It has to. I mean, simply because as you get to the top of this sport, it becomes, you know, infinitesimal. The things that make you, you different, mm -hmm. the things that separate you. Darian Grubb, having such a tremendous background at Hendrick Motorsports, was the liaison between Tony and Hendrick. And also Darian, with a tremendous engineering background, I think had direct input on that car. Well, Steve Addington moves in, who's a quality guy, quality crew chief, but does not have those relationships. I think it directly impacts performance. Even though you have the greatest race car driver on the planet sitting in the seat, mm -hmm. if you don't have those things, those intangibles, it's hard to win races. It's kind of the it factor. We've asked it about Brad Keselowski. We kind of just asked it about Clint Boyer if they have it, sure. that, that thing that can take them the rest of the way. Does Steve Addington have it for Tony Stewart? Well, Steve Addington does have it for Stewart, no doubt about that, but not right now. It's too soon. He's had to come over to this team from a Dodge team over at Roger Penske's, which the chassis are different, everything's different, and relearn everything over at Stewart. So it's a really tough call, but I want to get back to something uh, that's been really bothering me. Mm -hmm. The fans keep asking me why in the world did Tony Stewart go out there and win a championship yep. with Darian Grubb and then boot Grubb out of there and get a new crew chief? You know, standing back and looking at it, that's a pretty good question. If a guy wins a title and does so much on the racetrack, why would he change crew chiefs? Well, I guess that's something Tony Stewart only knows. But uh, I do know if you don't change nothing, nothing happens. But he did win a title, so why would you change? That's a question a lot of people are well, asking. And I think one of the things, too, right now is uh, last year, Tony Stewart's performance in the chase was at, at such an incredible level, career-defining yeah. level. The point is, how do you step in for somebody who gave Tony Stewart the ability to do that? It's almost like Addington, unless they came in this year and won six races, that Addington was almost sort of destined to fail. Well, I agree with that. And, and Tony put on a heroic performance throughout the chase. And we're measuring Steve Addington based upon that performance. And that's not fair. No. Obviously, what Tony did was just unbelievable. I think the results have been somewhat similar. You know, they raced pretty well early early on in the season. They did a great job. But I, I think they've, they've, they've run out of a little bit of steam. There's some pieces and parts missing. I think next year will be a better snapshot of the true performance of these two guys together. Well, we want to know what you think. What is the biggest difference between Tony Stewart this season and Tony Stewart a season ago? You can join our conversation on Twitter at NASCAR ESPN. Use the hashtag Pit Studio. And as always, we want to know how you're watching the race today. Tweet us your seat. Hey, Chris Busher <laughs> tweeted us yesterday during the Nationwide Series broadcast. Now, I've been told... This is not the dog we saw a couple weeks ago. That's the other dog in oh, the family. Okay. And if all you're here at the track, right, we want to know, right. how are your seats? Again, tweet us your seats. When we come back, we're always debating the pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses of our top drivers. Well, why stop there? Their crew chiefs are on the hot seat. Coming up next, who is the best? And then we ask the question, who doesn't belong? That is coming up next when we roll on Kansas. It's true. There was a time when NASCAR was a world almost exclusively reserved for those who grew up in the South. This is where racing was born. Running moonshine was the proven ground for the early races. 20 years ago, Alan Kowicki came south from Wisconsin. He might as well have been from Mars. When he won the championship in 1992, he had to swim through a sea of Southerners. Now compare that to today. The 2012 chase with the Sprint Cup is an American melting pot. This dozen comes from everywhere. From Indiana dirt, the Jersey Shore, up and down the Pacific Coast, and yes, a couple of Southerners too. It's easy to say that the good old boys of the past were more willing to speak their minds but they also didn't have cameras in their face everywhere they went. And today's stars, they can park the choir boy act when they need to. Go down there and tell that f***ing driver, if he's gonna race the f*** out of us, I'll race the f*** out of him for the next 200 laps. Does stock car racing still have its southern roots? Of course it does. Always will. Now the people they converted to the gospel of speed will carry their legacies far and wide. Now, it's nationwide. This is the United States of NASCAR. And because I'm a nerd and I keep track of this stuff, did you know we've now been to 20 different states? A few of them, more than once. 
I personally think that NASCAR should consider putting a race in Hawaii. That would be an excellent I'll idea. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. We should talk to them about 30. that. Yep. That's at Kansas really is lovely this time of the year. Today is the perfect day. And because of this track's newness, by the way, it's newly repaved, it's putting extra pressure on our crew chiefs. You heard what Clint Boyer said earlier. They are sweating it. And if you look at those four guys, could they be any any more different than, than one or the other? Uh, so let's put them on the hot seat. The pros and the cons. The good, the bad, the ugly, the weaknesses, and what could we see from them in these final five races? Let's start with the guy we kind of just talked about in the last segment, Rusty. That is Darian Grubb, who this year is with a new driver. Well, he's got a lot of positives. Yep. Probably only one negative. What's that? That's about it. I'm not going to tell you right yet. Okay. He is a very smart crew chief. This guy is very talented. He's won a championship last year with Tony Stewart, knows how to do it, and he's got a ton of backing from Hendrick Motorsports that he learned when he worked over Jimmy Johnson and those guys and all the Hendrick camp. So I really like how wise he is, how he really assembles a team, how he really delegates his team to work behind him and make it all happen. So Darian Grubb is definitely a champion-style crew chief. The only concern is now he's with Denny Hamlin, and he's got Hamlin up there 15 points behind in third position, got Denny looking really good. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, it seems as though Joe Gibbs Racing has kind of stumbled late in the chase races, you know, when they do get in the chase and when they get in the contention to win a championship. So I'm really concerned for Grubb, whether he can kind of corral these guys all together and not let, let them make any mistakes so they can go ahead and win this title. Because I know Grubb knows how to do it. So I know far. he's got the right people so far. You're so right. So far, he's obviously done a pretty yeah, good job. Yeah, he's doing great. You're exactly right. Can they stop the mistakes at the very end that Joe Gibb Racing has been plagued with? How different would you say the leadership style is to a Darian Grubb over at that 11 team to a Chad Knauss who's over with Jimmy Johnson? Well, they're somewhat similar because they both come from championship organizations. Uh, Darian actually did work with Chad. Chad was a member of the number 24 car when we won some championships. And uh, Chad has worked his way up from the, the an assistant in the body shop to, to be uh, the title that he's really earned over the past 10 years is right now he is the best crew chief in the business and that's good and bad he's got a great driver he knows how to use resources but the, dra the drawback to that is when you have been so successful for the past 10 years it sometimes makes you slow to adjust as things start to change like we're seeing some changing in the race strategy now it's hard to turn away from that notebook that you've developed over With the that last much 10 success. years well let's go do uh, down and, and talk to the driver of that 48 car jimmy johnson's with vince yes he is a, a two-time winner here at kansas and uh, has the best average finish at this track amongst all chasers but that was the old kansas and now of course it's the new kansas how have you been pleased with the way you and chad have attacked this new challenge this weekend you guys have had a lot of challenges in the past but this is different yeah we have but our, our mile and a half package has been strong and we've showed up here with uh, good speed and and good comfort in the car um, yesterday was interesting as the sun came out comfort factor went down for a lot of guys um, and then today it's hotter yet so uh, it'll be an interesting race I think the first half there's gonna be a lot of learning still going on um, even though we've been here for seems like a week now <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I, it's one thing this 48 team's really good at is adjusting to conditions. And I think the track will move up and out a little bit and give us some more options from a driver's standpoint. And uh, that, that stuff all works good for me. You mentioned the heat, and uh, as we just stand here, we can feel it's so much warmer than what it's been in the past. Of course, the first couple of days you were here is windy, cold, cloudy. How do you anticipate the conditions today affecting the way the car handles? What we saw yesterday was just a lack of comfort in kind of an edgy race car which is usually i don't know i would have thought that the cold conditions on a hard tire and on the test days would have made the car more edgy but for us our car was really locked down and, and comfortable and as the sun has come out it made it a bit more edgy so uh it's a little different than what i would normally expect but then again you know race time is so so much different than than anything else that we could ever do so uh, we'll get out there and keep, be smart, you know, at the start of this thing. Luckily, we have track position on our side and, and uh, protect that and then get in good race. Old Kansas or new Kansas, I wouldn't bet against this guy, Nicole. Jimmy Johnson. Probably not. That's pretty much a good bet as we look at all the uh, championships that's the true. last several years. So the first two crew chiefs that we just discussed, that's six championships between the two of them. These next two drivers are, excuse me, crew chief Brian Patty and Paul Wolf. Zero, Brad. Yeah, and what's interesting, when you, especially when talking about Brian Patty, here's a guy who's been around for a while, uh, has been in the sport, and we saw what he did last year for Juan Pablo Montoya the first 19 races before he was let go. He had that team performing at a top 10 
uh, category, in the top 10 categories. He's done the same thing in the first 19 races with Clint Boyer, but he's won a race. But I talked to Michael Waltrip, the owner of Michael Waltrip Racing, along with Clint Boyer, the driver, and asked for his strengths. They said what, what Brian Patty does very well is he takes all of his department managers and he listens to them. He takes all of the information, whether it's from the shot guy, the chassis guy, whoever, and he lets them do their job. But once he has the information, he lays out a game plan, and he will stick with that game plan. No, he hasn't won the races that Chad Canales has won. He hadn't won the championships that Darian Grubbs won. But he has the potential. And I, I, I think back to when I played basketball 20 years ago in Cleveland. There was a basketball coach there. Are you tall enough to play basketball? No, 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 no. There was a football coach there for the Cleveland Browns who they ran out of town because he wasn't quite as good as some of the superstar coaches. Uh-huh. That guy's name is Bill Belichick. Uh -huh. So I look at Brian Patty, and I see a guy who has that type of potential. And I think when you look back at 2009, when Brian Patty was with Mon Juan Pablo Montoya, they were in the chase. And at this point in the chase, Montoya was still very much much in this championship conversa conversation. Yes. Uh, as we switch over to Bri uh, excuse me, <laughs> Paul Wolf, you mentioned the lineage earlier. Chad Knaus is from the Evernham family tree. Uh, Darian Grubb is kind of of the Knaus hood. So where does Paul Wolf fall into line here? Well, Paul Wolf's a racer. He grew up racing, he grew up driving, and, and actually a, a good driver, a competent driver, built his own race cars. He's a good blue-collar racer, and he is new to the, the, the Sprint Cup scene, but you got to remember, this is the same guy that led um, Brad Keselowski and Roger Penske's team to their first NASCAR championship mm -hmm. in the Nationwide Series, so he's got some experience, and he's a student of the sport. He's been able to watch and, and really see what guys like Darian Grubb and Chad Knauss have been able to do. And he's coming up with these alternative strategies that, that are changing the sport a little bit. So he's a pretty bright guy. I'll tell you what, in my opinion, this guy is very, very new age. We're talking about Paul Wolf. He really knows how to get it done. And this is a bold statement I'm about to make, but I really do think that Paul Wolf and Brad Keselowski are the brand new Chad and Jimmy Johnson. And I think we've I heard really Ray do. say that several times yeah. this year as well. Well, let's talk to Paul's driver. He's with Jamie. And Brad Keselowski, you know, there's many reasons why he is leading the points right now. One of those being what they've been talking about in the studio, your relationship with Paul Wolf. What makes you guys so dynamic together? Yeah, well, I think we just believe in each other. And, um, you know, we're in uh, great conversations with each other about what we need to be better, and, and we're constantly moving forward. So it, it takes obviously more than just Paul and I. It takes everybody at Penske Racing working together uh, for one common goal, to win a Sprint Cup championship. And, uh, you know, I can feel that energy when I'm around everybody on the team or in the shop. So uh, it, it's really great and special. But certainly uh, the relationship Paul and I have is awesome. And, you know, I, I'm very proud of how that's developed. Uh, and, and, and I know that only comes around probably once in a career, and I'm very thankful for it. Now, the same tire you guys are running on here, you ran at Michigan. You guys finished second. How do you think that'll help you today? Well, yeah, absolutely. I think this track is driving a lot like Michigan. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to qualify very well, but that's kind of been our MO this year, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, I think our cars are really fast in race trim, uh, and I'm proud of that. And I think that uh, it will be again today. So we got to find ourselves from track position. And uh, just like Charlotte last week, I'm confident if we can do so that we can uh, hold it and, uh, and have a shot at the win. Well, you mentioned it, Nicole, starting mid-pack 25th today. All right, guys, I just want a name. If you had to pick one of those top four crew chiefs to take you through these final five races, just one guy, one name, who would it be? It's going to be Paul Wolf for me. Chad. Any of them. <laughs> Mr. Wishy-washy down there on the end. Maybe we can make him stick to something in a second. Well, they're when, there, they're there for a reason. Wishy-washy. And he's also a jinx. When we Man. come back, this track, this track Any has obviously them. changed a lot since we were years, last year. But what will be the most challenging part of this new and possibly improved Kansas Speedway? Denny Hamlin certainly found it challenging when we were here earlier in the week for testing. He had a big one. So how will that translate to what he does today? And it was this track about six weeks ago that led to a concussion for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He is still out, but what's his timeline for a return? That is coming up in just a minute. Don't go anywhere. Did I say 20 years ago? 20. 20. Hey, Mike. Welcome back to the Kansas Speedway. Well, sort of. It might look the same, it might even feel the same, but it's not. Since the last time we saw her, the old girl got a facelift. And until we put her new face in the spotlight, we won't know if she looks like a movie star or a horror flick. It's time to peel back those bandages. 
Welcome back to Kansas and welcome back to NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Countdown presented by Tire Rack. Now this track now has variable banking. The transition from the track to pit lane is, shall we say, abrupt. And there is, of course, that new surface. So that notebook that teams have been building since the track opened in 2001, yeah, they can throw it out the window. It's now worthless. It's hard to exactly know what to expect. It's going to be a big guessing game. It's kind of aggravating. It's just got a lot of grip and it's really fast. It's smoother than most highways that you go down. We're definitely finding the limits of the tire, the grip level, aerodynamics. I would have to assume that two tires and good fuel mileage are going to be awfully important coming in the race. You fight tight conditions and it's like you keep inching up on it, freeing it up, freeing it up, freeing it up. It will be easier to get more rubber on the racetrack as it gets more heat. you got to be extremely committed. All of a sudden, the thing busts sideways on you going 200 mile now and you're like, put it back, put it back. Back. Too far. Well, certainly this track has posed its challenges to drivers all week here, and no one knows that better than Denny Ham. When the hard lick on Thursday, a little bit of dizziness, some headaches, and Denny, everyone, including us, wants to know how you feeling today. I feel good. Uh, feels like any other race day, and uh, obviously the weather's cooperating with us today, so we're excited about our FedEx Freight uh, Toyota. We think that uh, a FedEx Fast Freight, uh, if anyone didn't know, FedEx's uh, freight company won the fastest uh, transportation uh, really in, in the world so it's an uh, awesome uh, accomplishment for them but you know, for me I feel good uh, I feel like 100% um, you know really I'm just excited to get this race going let's address the race you talked about it you guys have qualified and practice but have not raced on this new surface what's the biggest unknown for you today well I, I think the biggest unknown is what is the what is the sun and the heat going to change with the racetrack I know yesterday it made our car quite a bit tighter than what it had been uh, during the test. Uh, so we readjusted. You know, we made some wholesale adjustments overnight to try to correct that. Uh, we'll see if it's in the right direction. Third in the point standing, just 15 back. Still lots of time, though, five races to go. What's a bigger priority for you today? Is it uh, gaining a few points or making sure you don't lose any to Keselowski and Johnson in today's race? It's, it's winning the race. It's chipping away uh, a race at a time, you know, gaining those two and three valuable points leading a lap leading the most laps all that matters in our system um you know you just with these guys that are going to run up front every single week you, you can't afford to give up five points six points each and every race you, you've got to chip away at it uh we're going to continue to chip away these next five races and we're going to find ourselves hopefully in a spot where we have a chance to win when we get to homestead hey we're glad you're doing well and good luck today appreciate it denny hamlin Nicole? We really thought yesterday's Nationwide Series race was going to be one big giant unknown, but what it led to was one of the best Nationwide Series races of this season. So what do you think we learned? Uh, we learned a lot that this brand new design racetrack that's 17 degrees in the bottom goes up to 20 on the top, progressive banking. We there were locked on the bottom all through practice, but in the Nationwide race, they moved that second groove up and gave those guys a lot more room to race. So what I've learned is that the racetrack's really coming around and getting a lot better. But one thing I also learned is that pit road is going to be a real big issue i think getting off the banking down onto that flat pit road it really upsets the cars and i think that's the one thing we're really going to have to look at is pit road a it's little bit. also the place we could see some strategy tires came into play yesterday what do you think we'll see today well the pit road is t is tough getting on and you could, could see some action there obviously any race we go to pit performance is important for track position but today not coming to pit road may be the biggest deal because Keeping your track position, keeping your car out front, I think is going to be really important today. You know what I think about when I think of yesterday's race? Loose. Yeah, My yeah. Lord, yeah we did. We saw a lot of loose race cars. We saw a lot of incidents yesterday because of the cars getting away from them. You see Ricky Stenhouse here early coming off the corner. I talked to Greg Stucker, the director of race tires for Goodyear, and we talked about this race tire because many of the drivers have talked about the, the firmness, how hard this tire is. They brought the same tire that is the Michigan tire. Uh, obviously, as it gets warmer, that tire being so hard will pick up more grip. That's what they're counting on. They have a very durable race tire, but we saw, and particularly Brian Scott yesterday, anytime you get out of the throttle abruptly, it almost picks the car up, unloads the car, and turns it around. So these guys are the best in the world at what they do, but I think the grip level will come up as it gets hotter. The temperature difference today is literally yeah, 20, 20 25 degrees and different make a big than difference. where we were earlier in the week. Yeah. <laughs> if you can hear my producer in my ear right now, he wants me to say, <laughs> Da Bears, coverage of Monday Night Football continues tomorrow on ESPN. First at 6.30, <laughs> it is Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's. Then at 8.30, it's the NFC North rivalry with my producer's team, the Chicago Bears, taking on... 
The Lions. Megatron, Monday Night the Lions. Football. Megatron, Lions Bears tomorrow at 830 on ESPN. Get ready. Matthew Stafford, please get me some fantasy. <laughs> that, that's not when, that's Jeff Ingles Bears. Come when on, we come back, quite possibly my favorite part of the show. Stick a fork in them. We've got some surprises this week, and for some reason, I also have a press release. What the? I'll explain uh, when we surprise. come Lions back. Lions and Tigers and Bears. Oh, my. Oh my. <laughs> One month ago, 12 men began a 10-week journey in the second city. In Chicago, the two outlasted the 48 and the 5 to win round one, as seven chasers ran top 10. The 24 crashed out, the 11 ran out, the balance of power shifted, and for the very first time in his career, number two was number one. The 11 called his shot in round two, then delivered in Loudon. The long-term gain was minimal, as the 48, 24, 15, 5, 2, and 14, all chasers, all ran top seven. Back-to-back -back seconds shot the 48 to first by one over two. Round three steered to the concrete jungle. The 48 as the favorite and the 11 on edge. Both performed, the two performed better. 89 laps on one tank of fuel sent number two back to number one. And the power shift continued. Talladega, the wild card. The beautiful unknown, two by two, three by three, and four wide. Six inches apart, 10 rows deep, 189 times. 54 lead changes among 18 drivers and a million near misses. And ultimately, the inevitable. One slight mistake sent the 14 airborne and left 25 cars in a smoldering pile. The 14, 88, 48, 29, 5, 15, 56, and 2 were all collected. The 17 escaped to win but gained no notable ground because the two, two, missed the worst of the mayhem. So after Talladega, this is where we stood. Round five, open to sobering news. 88 would sit after two concussions in six weeks, dropping him to 12. His championship, over. The race saw one, two, three, and the standings run one, two, three on the racetrack for much of the night. But the two, while in P1, went one lap too many, ran out of fuel and finished 11. 48 made up seven points, 11 made up eight. 15 stretched his fuel to victory lane for the third time this season to pull within 28 of two with five to go my what a crescendo it really is amazing how five races can really shake things up i wonder what we'll be saying after these final five races of this 2012 season here's what i can tell you after the first half of the chase there are a few drivers who are Done. My friends, it is fork. time for Stick a Fork in them. <laughs> My favorite part of the day. Mine too. Quick reminder, we have already eliminated five drivers. Martin Truex Jr., Greg Biffle, Dale Earnhardt Jr., who is again not racing today as he continues to recover from a concussion. Matt Kenseth and Kevin Harvick have also been deemed done. The top three in points, guys, Brad Keselowski, Jimmy Johnson, and Denny Hamlin, do we once again agree that they shall remain forklifts? No, yeah, forklifts. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're good right now. So let's start with Clint Boyer, fourth in points, and the only holdout in this, which I find amazing now, is Everham. Uh, who won last week? End of story. Clint Boyer. No fork. No fork. No fork. No fork. He's in trouble. Go ahead. You think he's in trouble? Yeah, oh yeah, Clint Boyer's in trouble. He's done. Oh, okay. Clint, Clint's done. Uh, Casey Kane only has one fork, surprise, surprise, courtesy of Brad. Uh, is that changing <laughs> this week? It ain't changing. He well, can't it really it is. It really is. I'm going to fork Casey Kane. There you go. And the reason I'm forking him, he's too far back. He's That's winning. Right. He's running. I mean, he can win. He can run up good. He can probably win this race. Probably he starts fair. at but home. 35 points back, man. That's way too far back. That's, That's the right. reason he's getting a fork. That is less that than a Pole today. Race. Pole today. Pole today. And the mix up in the race yesterday. No fork for Casey what? this week. What are you talking I'm about? I'm getting peer pressure and bullying, but no fork. That's unbelievable. No, stop Tony bullying me. Stewart, the defending hey. champion. Last week, he was free and clear. What do we think of him now, Rusty? Oh, man, Brad hit me for saying this. But Tony Stewart is getting a fork. Oh, he me? is 50 points back. He is 15 points farther back than Casey Kane. It's impossible, in my opinion, for even the best guy, Tony Stewart, last year champion, to make up that much ground. Tony, buddy. I'm sorry, he won. but you got the fork. He won three of the final four races of the season last year. I just, yeah. yeah, you know what? I'm going to have to go with Rusty. I don't think he's going to win three of the, of the next four races. I, I think there's, the mojo is off. I'm sorry, too, because Tony is just such a great race car driver, but he's done. It, it, the mojo's not working. You saw the crew chief spot. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Tony. Don't hit me, well, Tony, get please. Right. You are forking the former champion, but Hold you're on. leaving Casey Kane in the hunt. Wait a minute. You got Casey right. Kane still in the hunt. Clear on that. Tony's out. Last hey, but not least, Jeff Gordon. A quick reminder: Jeff Brad Gordon. said he was done back in Michigan in June. What do you think? Okay. What's wrong with y'all? I've been staying with Gordon for a long time because he's had all these second-place finishes all the of times late. he wrecked you. But <laughs> right now, he's 50 points behind Brad. Yeah. The same number as Tony Stewart, our last year's champion. True. And if I'm forking Stewart, I am sure to heck in the fork Jeff Gordon. I like, at least you so, got a good reason. I, I got a right. reason. I like man. that. All right. That makes sense. Jeff and Gordon's fork. That makes sense. I am not kidding when I say so this. We know. What? I actually have a, fr a press release. Press Ray release. Evernham. <coughs> oh, man. Did Official you read that statement release? from the office Wait, of ESPN NASCAR analyst Ray Evernham. I will not place a fork in Jeff Gordon what? until he is mathematically eliminated. What? No further questions. He's almost the last guy standing. What are you talking about? Hey, you don't work on the he side. He ain't even got a chance to make it to eighth place. It's much I believe the last day. line is no, no further man. questions. What's wrong with you? So we will move on. You hit your head, dude, last what night somewhere. What's wrong with you? I do want to go back and talk about someone that we, we didn't talk about just now. That's, again, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He is yeah, not man. here this week as uh, he continues to recover from that concussion. The, the plan for Junior is to test a car this week and then to hopefully get back into a car at Martinsville. Once again, we have Regan Smith in that 88 car. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I mean, that's outstanding. We're, we're anticipating him getting back to, to racing. I uh, just want to clear up something that was said. There was some media outlets that reported that I said that he should take the rest of the year off mm -hmm. last year. And I, should. I didn't say that. I said he could be looking at the end of his career, possibly, or he could be back in two to three weeks racing. And, and it looks like he may be back racing in a couple weeks. And that's because no two concussions are treated right. the same way. Right. Everyone is different. And Get as better. we said last week, uh, we really do wish him the best in a Absolutely. speedy and full recovery. Regan Smith going into this weekend said, you better look out for us. I think we have a chance to, to put it on, on pole. But he had a little issue in qualifying. But he was fast in practice, though. Man, he was flying in practice. We better not blow up like he did last week. Race yeah. friends, check this out. NASCAR.com slash race buddy to watch coverage live from Kansas Speedway. Follow your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. And when we come back, the not done Casey Kane, at least according That's to Ray Evernham. The reason why That's Ray ridiculous. refuses to give up on him? Well, he's the pole sitter today, and we'll be talking to him next. And then why we might see more yellow today. That's coming up in a minute. So Tony's out at 8, but Jeff is in at 9. NASCAR Sprint Cup Countdown is presented by TireRack.com. Research, buy, deliver, install. Tire Rack. Welcome back to Kansas. We just talked about Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now an official update. Doc, what's up? Now let's talk to the man who should know, Rick Hendrick. Uh, we're talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I know he went to Pittsburgh to have the post-impact uh, studies done. What's the latest and uh, with regard to next week at Martinsville? Yeah, he's, he's, Dale came through with flying colors. Everything's great. Uh, he can't wait to get back in the car. He's really anxious, and uh, we're anxious to get him back. So next week he's been cleared to race Martinsville. So we're excited, excited to get him back. And I bet a lot of fans are excited too, Dave Burns. We know now officially Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in the cup car at Martinsville. I'm sure Casey Kane is pleased with that too. Dale Jr. back in the car officially next week. Uh, Casey is our Coors Light pole sitter, award winner of this weekend. You are 35 points out of the championship lead, Casey. How are you viewing your championship hopes right now? Well, we need to uh, gain points and, and gain them quick. So we, it'd be great to win today. Uh, we have a great starting spot with our Farmers Insurance Chevrolet. And felt pretty good yesterday in practice. The track's uh, fast and smooth, and it, and it has some more banking. It's going to change today because the temperatures are warmer. So it'll be kind of interesting how it all plays out. But uh, hopefully it all works out well for us, and we can gain some points today and uh, get ourselves in a better spot. I guess real quick, the wind is blowing towards turn three. Is that the opposite of what it has been most of the week? I feel like... That's kind of similar to yesterday myself, so it'll probably be, probably be kind of loose into three or something, but, um, you know, I, who knows. It's, uh, this wind kind of gets blown in all directions, and you can't, it's hard to tell until you're actually out there on, on what it's going to do. A challenge all day long. Nicole? Well, there's been an interesting trend over the last few years. The number of cautions during the chase is dropping dramatically. However, yesterday in the Nationwide Series race, we broke a record for the most number of cautions in a race here in Kansas. Is that any indication of what we'll see today? 
Well, I think we will see some more cautions today. I think what we've seen in the past is it's been very, very difficult to pass. These cars are running a lot of the same speed, so it's kind of kind of hard to get yourself in position to pass. But with this second groove not quite being established and having to go race there, I think we could see some cautions. We did I don't say wanna, yesterday. I don't want to see anybody get hurt, okay? No, no, no. But I want to see some more cautions. I think we it will. makes it more exciting, man. I we did we say yesterday that the ones that tend to crash, they were the younger drivers, the, the, the inexperienced drivers. Okay, guys, race favorite time of the day. Picks. We've Who's going to win the race, Ray? All right. I'm going to pick Casey Kane to win the race today. I know I forked him for the title. <laughs> what? I forked him for the title, yeah. but I think he can win the race. I'm picking Casey Kane to win today. Ray, who are you going to jinx today? I am going to jinx, hopefully not jinx, Kyle Busch. Oh, I think done. Kyle, I think he's he done. learned something in the nationwide race yesterday. I think he found a line. I'm going to stick up for you. Last week, your pick was Clint Boyer. But we, and it worked. Brad, nobody knows that, though. No. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Jimmy Johnson. I think it's time. If he's going to win this championship, this is a, uh, a stake in the ground, statement type day. Let's see if that 48 that, can do what they need good, to do. That's a pretty good pick. How many Brad? cautions are we going to see? I'm saying uh, seven cautions. Do you think the experience level is actually going to matter a little bit more yeah, today? I, do. I, 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 I do. personally No think doubt it. about it, but 200 more horsepower and 20 more mile an hour, anything can happen. Uh, I think we, we've just got to wait and see how fast the track gets wide and how wide, yeah. but I think we're going to see people rooting other guys up off the bottom. That's Sometimes where the cautions happen. Well, 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 you and I drove the racetrack this morning. Mm -hmm. We drove around this place, got a little experience on it. That pit road, getting off the track on a pit road is going to be tough. Lots of stuff to watch You might see some today. guys spinning out right there. When we come back, we busted on Tony Stewart earlier for his qualifying effort. Well, all is fair, so we should also bust on the points leader, Brad Keselowski. They will tell us why he has a tough road ahead of him today. Coming up next. Another spectacular Sunday, continuing the run of terrific weather that's favored race fans and racers this fall. Today, it's the Kansas Speedway, newly repaved with slightly higher banking, making it faster than ever. And to that stage comes the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup, with the point lead half of what it was a week ago, and a familiar favorite putting pressure on his younger rival for the title. Do not call it a comeback. It might sound like a good story, but that's just a media hype job. Bell bottoms, platform shoes, Robert Downey Jr., those are comebacks. This is your place. Let's get it done today. Our boys, big deep. But the 48 team leads. The doubt is the disrespect. He got a song to sing. He got an axe to grind. He's far and wide, but still hard to find. He goes wild, 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 wild. Mr. Five Time is a legend. He racks up points like frequent flyer models. Dude doesn't just drive, he's driven. Let me go off do my thing. He demands more than most, which is why he's got a timeshare on victory lane. There are no rainy days with the 48 team. They see every race as a chance to win. This is a tank so full of belief, it would take down the Batmobile. Get that heat out of me, can't handle it. Come back? Shoot. The only thing more consistent is the Rocket Gibraltar. Because that's how Jimmy rolls. He's either coming after you, or he's gone. Three times in the past, Jimmy Johnson took over the championship lead at Kansas Speedway and went on to win the title. But Brad Keselowski will not give up that point lead easily. 400 miles today will tell the story. ESPN's coverage of the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup presented by Ram. Coming to you from the Kansas Speedway in Kansas City, Kansas. The opening ceremony and command to start engines coming up just moments from now. Alan Bester joined by champion driver Dale Jarrett and champion crew chief Andy Petrie. And this is where the pressure of this championship really begins to build. Yeah, it's getting that time. This is what these drivers and teams have worked for all year long. And as I went through the garage area this weekend, you can feel things starting to ramp up. They're excited about the opportunity that they have, but it doesn't make any difference if you've been there before. You're still not immune to this pressure, and it continues to build. Today will be no different. Yeah, our points leader, Brad Keselowski, and his team, and Paul Wolf have been really cool and calm through this whole thing. But I did notice a little bit, too. I talked to Paul Wolf a little bit uh, the early in the weekend, and I can sense just a little bit of pressure as this thing really comes down to the end. Well, will the pressure be a factor in the race today? How will the high speeds and newly repaved Kansas Speedway play in the story of the chase for the championship? All to be determined as we go throughout this beautiful 73-degree afternoon in America's heartland. We begin by going trackside for the opening ceremony. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the 4th Brigade, 1st Infantry Division Color Guard from Fort Riley, Kansas presents our nation's colors. We recognize the case colors of the 4th Brigade combat team signifying that the unit is currently deployed to combat operations in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Please remain standing as Cole Cochran of Kansas City Alliance Raceway Ministries offers today's invocation. Oh God, our lives are full of races, some decided by a few votes, some by a few seconds. Help us to trust you to lead us through the races of our lives. Help us make good decisions as we race. I pray for safety for each driver and team, each safety crew and official. Please bless the men and women of our armed forces. In the grace and power of God, I pray, amen. Here to honor America, please welcome the 1st Infantry Division Band from Fort Riley, Kansas, as they perform our national anthem. Time to race in Kansas. 400 miles coming up in race number six in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Kansas is presented by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. And in part by Sprint. Say no to sharing. Say yes to Sprint. With truly unlimited data, visit Sprint.com slash speed. You know, sometimes we forget about fast. We throw around terms like cookie cutter as if this is some leisurely Sunday parkway. Yeah, whatever. When the green flag falls and 43 hammers drop all at once, when those tires grab hold and that black top grabs right back, even the coolest cats feel a surge in their chest. No matter how many times they've done this before, fast is always fast. And how fast is it? Well, everyone in the field broke the track qualifying record that had stood since 2005 here at Kansas Speedway as we get ready for race number six in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. When you come to a newly repaved track, there's a lot of talk about single file racing and hard to pass, and I'm curious for your thoughts. Will we see that, or will we see the kind of interesting action we saw in yesterday's Nationwide Series race? Yeah, a lot of the action that we saw yesterday, and as these drivers uh, in this race today were either participating or watching that on TV yesterday, I think they breathed a sigh of relief that <laughs> they were going to have more than that single groove that they're accustomed to when they come to these newly repaved tracks. There's a lot of racing room on the actual racing surface, but we're going to see them down below on the front straight away, being able to make a pass, drafting going to come into play, but don't get too much of a false sense of security that that second groove is really, really wide. You have to stay tight. That's going to get this inside car loose. You have to be extremely careful and don't get too overcome. Yeah, they were still pretty narrow. I, one thing, though, these cut cars seem to be able to widen that groove out a little bit more than the nationwide cars. 
We'll maybe have a little bit of overcast today. Don't know how that's going to play into that. But we might see actually both grooves move up the racetrack because remember, there is more banking up there if they can get it worn in. So we'll see how today's race plays out versus yesterday's Nationwide Series event. And by comparison, the April Sprint Cup Series race here had only three cautions. Yesterday's Nationwide event had a dozen. We expect today to be somewhere in the middle. Now, as for Brad Keselowski, starting 25th, how will these early laps be for him? Uh, very nervous. I, I'd say that Brad's going to be extremely careful, even though he knows that he has the car and can normally work his way through this traffic. This racetrack is still slick. A lot can happen. I don't think they're panicked. They, this team knows how to do this. They've done this a lot. They know how to start from the back, and he's got a really good crew chief on the box with Paul Wolf. I think that they'll work this thing methodically, just like they have so far. They're leading the points for a good reason, because they make good decisions. Not a new thing for them to start mid-pack here lately, and for the most part, they've seemed to make it work out. We'll see how they make it work out today. A lot of unknowns in this race here at Kansas Speedway, over 400 miles. Who wins today? Time to start finding out right now as we go trackside for the command to start engines. Race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome actor, comedian, and proud Kansas native Rob Riggle. You ready for some racing? <laughs> All right. Well, hey, on behalf of all of the hollywood casino employees here locally all 800 of them and all 16,000 nationwide welcome to the hollywood casino 400. all right it's almost go time drivers start your engine With gusto, we are ready to race here at Kansas Speedway today. And our ESPN in-race reporters, a man who'd make a lot of these Kansas fans very happy if he were able to win. Clint Boyer from Emporia, southwest of here, about 100 miles, reignited his championship hopes with a big win at Charlotte last Saturday night, his third victory of the season. Kansas Clint would love to pull off the victory here in his hometown, something that's avoided him thus far in his Sprint Cup career. But we'll talk with Clint on the parade and pace laps about whether it's possible today next. NASCAR, we love our nicknames, don't we? Some are catchy and, well, some are downright scary. But none roll off the tongue quite like a hometown handle. Awesome Bill from Dawsonville. Texas Terry. The Rushville Rocket. This weekend, it's about Kansas Clint. And interesting to note that Kansas Clint Boyer's in about the same position points-wise as Tony Stewart was a year ago. After five races in the chase, Stewart, the eventual champion, was 24 points off the lead. Clint Boyer is hanging there 28 points from the top. If he can win some more like he did last week, you just never know. Clint Boyer, our ESPN in-race reporter today. Hey, Clint, Del Jarrett. Uh, we were just showing the fans uh, your stellar season so far here and uh, with that victory last week. And kind of leads us to our mailbag question. Parker from Emporia, Kansas, asked, with three wins this year, did you ever think that transitioning to a new team would go so smooth? <laughs> Man, I tell you, it's, uh, it's been a, a dream come true, really, uh, to be able to change everything that we changed uh, from the ground up. Everything. I mean everything. And have this much success this quick has just been a lot of fun. But, uh, man, we ain't done yet. we got five more races to try to win us a championship. We're going after it. Hey, Clint, I know that you've had a lot of time on the racetrack this week, but a lot of that time was spent just kind of in one groove. But as you watched the Nationwide race yesterday, did it give you a little better feeling that that second groove is going to be something you can use today? That's definitely something we all had our eye on watching that Nationwide race, seeing how those double file, uh, you know, restarts we're going on and how how much success they could have on the outside we got to get some rubber bird into it we know this track is progressive banking and over time eventually that line will come in uh, just a matter of time to see if it'll happen in this race and if it does uh, we'll adapt to it adjust our car to it make it happen all right clint thanks for talking with us uh, have a great day out there and now andy's going to talk to your crew chief brian patty 
Brandon. Hey, Brian, it's Andy in the booth. Congratulations last week on a big win. Engineered up there on the pit box. Coming here to Kansas, though, this is a real challenging surface. This brand new racetrack. How do you make a car go fast and furthermore keep it fast all day here? Well, uh, obviously testing two days helped us out a lot. Um, used a lot of the 55 nodes from the tire test when they tested here. So track's so smooth. Um, you know, we've got all every ounce of speed out of the car that we, we think we have. Uh, but it just puts you in such a small box uh, for adjustment. So we're, we'll, do, we'll do the best we can. Uh, Strategy is going to be important today. Um, track position is going to be key, just like anywhere else. And we'll just do the best we can. Well, thanks a lot, Brian. You've done a great job so far for Clint this year. I'm sure you'll do it today. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you, guys. Clint Boyer starting inside row number two today. Our in-race reporter, our over-the-wall camera, is being carried by Alan Troutman today, the front tire carrier for Carl Edwards, another team and driver that love to have a Kansas win. Have a great day, Alan. Thank you. Carl Edwards starting in 17th position at the closest track to his hometown of Columbia, Missouri. Most of our ESPN High Definition onboard cameras ride with championship chasers today. Brad Keselowski, the point leader, has got the Dodge on board. Interesting stat of the week. You know, in the last three repaved tracks, there's been a wreck on the first lap. All uh, right, well, that trend's either going to continue or it's not. It's 50-50 chance. Well, that's <laughs> an interesting one there. Uh, Casey Kane from pole position has got the sprint on board camera. Danica Patrick's got the GoDaddy.com on board. And Denny Hamlin, one of the title contenders with the fresh from Florida Gulf Seafood camera. There's Clint Boyer, the five-hour energy onboard camera. And Greg Biffle, who's enjoyed a great deal of success at this track, has the Ford EcoBoost on board. Mr. Five-Time, Jimmy Johnson's got the Lowe's on board. The thing, Earl, is just be aware of the wind as it is blowing today. If it does shift around or as it does increase, let's just try to keep Jimmy abreast of what's going on. I can't feel too much down here. Another interesting thing to keep an eye on, and Martin Truex Jr., who led so many laps and came so close to winning here in April, has got the Toyota on board today. He'll be one to keep an eye on as we go through this race as well. So as the cars work the parade and pace laps today, we look again at the championship picture, beginning race six in the chase, with Brad Kozlowski having half the lead over Jimmy Johnson that he did a week ago, just seven points, and Denny Hamlin, 15 back. Yeah, but I'm going to keep my own uh, post hitter Casey Kane today. I know the three analysts down in the pit studio have all said he doesn't have a chance at this championship. I'm not giving up. Five of his uh, wins have come from the pole of those 14 that he has, and half of them, seven, were on mile and a half tracks. Yeah, and I know that they've probably written off Tony Stewart, too, but he's my guy to watch. I know he doesn't have a great average finish here for the last three races at 18, but the last three repays, he's finished no worse than third. So I've got my eye on him today. That's a fascinating twist, too. So Tony Stewart, a lot of work for Tony starting 33rd on today's grid. And for more stories from Pit Road before they go up to full speed racing, we check with Vince Welch. And Alan, when this chase started, Greg Biffle believed he was going to be one of those contending for the championship, but he had three straight races to open the chase outside the top ten. Of course, the guys in the pit studio promptly put a fork in him, and Biffle admits that it's a long shot as far as his championship hopes are concerned. But if there's a chance at all, Biffle and crew chief Matt Pusha know they've got to be aggressive on the track and on the pit box, and they promise they will be today. Doc Punch? Denny Hamlin's week in Kansas began with a uh, destroyed race car after a near 200 mile an hour slide into the wall and a trip to the infield care center. But Denny rebounded nicely. He qualified a backup car in ninth position. And today, crew chief Darian Grubb says, you know what? This car Denny's in right now is not quite as fast as the other one, but you know, this one may be more consistent on the long run. So we should be just fine. Here's Dave Burke. You just saw the graphic. Jimmy Johnson cut the lead in half after last week's strong run in Charlotte. But what about the other seven points? Well, Gucci Jack and Alice told me this morning they've got all the speed they need. They're right where they need to be speed-wise, and we know that they're a player in the fuel mileage game. Kansas Speedway may be all new, but the 48 has been here before. Jamie Little? Well, last week when point leader Brad Keselowski ran out of fuel mid-race, it was a perfect opportunity to point the finger at his crew chief, Paul Wolf. But that wasn't the case. Instead, the two talked about it, learned from it, and they moved on. This is exactly what makes them a dynamic duo. They respect each other, and they share in making the race calls together. I expect to see more of that today as they start mid-pack in 25th. Alan? All right, Jamie, thanks. 
And before we get started with the Hollywood Casino 400 in Kansas, we remind you to check out NASCAR.com slash RaceBuddy to watch coverage live today from Kansas Speedway by following your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. So a couple of drivers have to drop to the back of the pack because they made engine changes during the official race weekend, not the test days Wednesday, Thursday, but from Friday onward. Jeff Burton, one of those who will go to the back. Danica Patrick also made an engine change and will drop to the back on these pace laps for the start. There were six engine failures during the April race here. And with fresh pavement and higher speeds, but a different gear ratio. We'll see if that becomes a story today. 267 laps on this mile and a half track make up the 400 miles. The championship leader is deep in the pack. His primary rivals for the title are up front for the start. And we are ready to go racing before a huge crowd at Kansas. Pink and black car did not get through turns one and two well at all. Now he had a big, big wiggle as he tried to exit turn two. Mark Martin's going to lead lap one. Casey Kane in second in the five. Eric Almarola in a car they were rebuilding in the garage area this morning slides through the third in the 43. Jimmy Johnson on the move, 48. Racing with Joey Logano there. That's for sixth and seventh. And for second place, again, Al Moroa. Right off the bat, that second lane's pretty good. I know Casey Kane lost his spot right there, and he gets a little loose off turn two. I see a lot of action up there on the start of the race, so Mark, Mark picked the lead from up there. Kyle Busch through. Ryan Newman through Casey Kane. I believe these cars that we see struggling and drivers with their cars right now are probably a little bit on the loose side. You have a new surface. The speeds are up there, but it makes it very difficult to handle that loose situation. Clint Boyer trying to regain some lost ground, working on Jimmy Johnson for the eighth spot. The situation right here, that inside car, you think is going to have the advantage. We saw Jimmy Johnson give him a little bit more room right there. If they stay tucked up right there side to side, it makes that inside car get extremely loose in the corner. At Kenseth 17, A.J. Allmendinger 51. That 51 car with Allmendinger looks pretty strong. He's been pretty strong all week. Been about top 15 car just about the whole time. How long is it going to take you as a driver to feel out how much of that top lane you can use and to what extent? Yeah, it's going to take a while. I mean, you're just going to be easing into the throttle. You're not going to drive it off into the corner. To, and so that means that your speed in the center of the corner is not going to be as great. This is what we're going to see a lot of, too. Although uh, Almadine are not able to make that pass there, but we will see some cars utilize that with a big draft down the front straightaway. Almarola closing in on Mark Martin for the race lead up front. And Jamie, there was a big crowd around this 43 car just before it rolled off onto the racetrack. Well, there sure was right after they said gentlemen start he fired it up and said i'm not getting any fuel pressure he said as soon as i let off the throttle it quits running so they had engineers everybody looking at it of course they couldn't do anything to fix it so we'll keep an eye on it alan he's got fuel pressure now jamie he just took the lead yeah, he solved the problem he just doesn't let off the gas <laughs> <laughs> 43 looks stout Good perspective from that shot, just how fast they're going. Here on this new pavement at Kansas, we saw some speeds in practice on Saturday of 207 miles an hour into turn one. Yeah, it's going to be the fastest part of the racetrack to get through 
as you enter turn three here and can get back to the gas so early, these drivers are telling me, way before the center of the corner. Therefore, you're carrying a lot of speed on the exit in the corner. The trial was the fastest part. There's well champ. over 200. Sorry, Dale, there's your championship leader, Brad Kozlowski, started 25th, settled into line, and he's trying to pick him off one at a time, Dave. I thought it was interesting in the pre-race, Brad talked about how Paul Wolf is crew chief and Brad believe in each other. Well, I'll tell you who else he's believing in right now. His spotter, Joey Meyer. Joey has been practically nonstop talking to his driver. Starting back that far, he's got lots of cars to pass inside, outside, and he's been in his ear the entire first few laps of this race. Well, it was their radio we heard that stat on, on the pace laps about the early wreck. There is a set of one car running the middle lane. They're side by side. He's not moving backwards or forwards. It's the 48 beside the 17. They've been that way for three or four laps, just so you know. Five back to the crowd. He was actually able to complete the pass on the 17 on the middle lane like the Nationwide cars. Five back to the 78. That's good information. He's given him just so he knows if he finds himself in that situation that, hey, that second lane is pretty good. You can use it. Right now, Kozlowski working on Juan Pablo Montoya to try and get 21st position away in these opening laps. Eric Almarola in Richard Petty's 43 started in fifth position. He's running first after just 11 laps of today's 400 miler. The NASCAR Spring Cup Series at Kansas, presented by Ram, inviting you to go to NASCAR.com for all of your latest NASCAR information. 16 laps in, Eric Almarola is the leader. Which driver do you think will take first out of this week's top four qualifiers? Those four, Casey Kane, Mark Martin, Clint Boyer, or Kyle Busch. Text FAST to 34763 or go to attfastestdriver.com to play. You can have a chance to win 4Gs by playing along in today's AT&T Fastest Driver Challenge. And every week, you have a chance to make your pick and serious stack up against the rest. Casey Kane started on pole position, but he's dropped back to sixth place, Vince. Those first laps after the green flag dropped, Allen Casey reported that the car was hitting the splitter as he dropped back a handful of positions. But after the pressures came up, he returned to the radio on lap eight and said the front end is really good, but he's still a little loose in the right rear. But uh, they certainly feel better than they did those initial laps at the start. All right, so a little momentary, oh boy, what have I got here? <laughs> and now things have settled in for today's pole sitter. Since the last time these guys were on the racetrack, there was obviously a 300-mile race yesterday. Things changed. It looked like it was going to be sunny today. Now we have cloud cover. So a lot of things different. These drivers get settled in. There's Greg Biffle. He's settling in really nicely so far with a little different groove right now. If you watch Biffle in the corners, saw this just a couple of laps ago where everybody else has got the left sides right down on that white line or yellow line. He's starting to move it up a little bit. Getting a good run doing that, too. I mean, he made a pass on Joe Logano easily. Just like he's going to do on Casey Kane right here. Wouldn't surprise me to see Casey move up there once he sees Biffle doing that if his car's not too loose. But Biffle is moving towards the front, Vince. Andy, as he moved up that half lane, as you guys talked about it, the speed kicking in, and he came over the radio and he said, here we go, hang on to your britches. <laughs> he, he, he felt it getting faster. Likes what he's got right now. Matt Fuchsia, the crew chief there on the right-hand side of your screen, told me we were a lot better than 11th where we qualified. We've got a real fast race car. We believe we've got something to work with and can win this race today. It's a long way from over, but they're looking good early. Yeah, Dale, it's got to be fun when you're the first guy to kind of find that, that extra groove or that extra speed in another groove yeah it is a lot of fun as a driver you get that and, and start making some passes you realize others are going to catch on because it's a group of smart drivers you're working with but it's kind of fun you just have to be careful that's still a very narrow groove you don't want to venture outside of there too far yeah you're, you're the first one up there you figure it out we catch on put a camera on it the spotters up on the roof all catch on <laughs> and they all see the lap times and hey. greg biffle certainly will have no lack of confidence here at Kansas Speedway based on past record. He loved the old track. He looked like he's loving this one, too. His fastest car on the track last lap. So the Biff in sixth and rising. Looks like Denny Hamlin in front of him is starting to creep up and use that second layer of banking as well here at Kansas Speedway. Eric Almarola leading in the early going.
Looking down on Kansas Speedway today from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. From pit lane to victory lane, every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And we invite you to stay tuned for NASCAR nonstop coverage during the second half of today's race presented by Ram. Caution free so far at Kansas Speedway in race six in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Still not quite 50 miles into the event. And after Mark Martin led the opening six laps, Eric Almarola blasted by him in that 43 car. And he's moved away from second place by nearly five seconds. Now, Jamie, when I saw this 43 car in the garage this morning, the right side was unpainted, undecaled on anything. Well, they had what you could call a little issue yesterday in happy hour. Of course, Eric Umroll, you see him waving out the window saying thank you very much for moving out of my way. Had a little incident, was pushing it. They were so good in all the practice sessions. He ended up sliding up the track, got into the wall on the right-hand side. Thankfully for this team and this rocket ship of a car, we have a caution on the track, guys. Got one car that's gotten into the wall there. It looks like Casey Mears in the 13. Trying to get it around here. Brakes are done. We gotta go to the garage. Yeah, he's hit the wall so hard. It looks like he maybe have, uh, broke the right brake rotor, which I'll have to put that back on and fix that before they go back out. Yeah, we're here on the guys. Oh, uh, yeah, you can see that tire let go right there. Oh. Casey running in 31st position at the time. And boy, that's a hard shot. You can see that momentum almost carried him back up into traffic. Lose a lot of things on these cars when it, it's dragging around the racetrack, so some debris to be picked up. After Casey Mears into the wall, first caution of the race is out. Just 32 laps in. And remember that in the April race here on April 22nd, there were only three caution flags in this race. And as we mentioned a little while ago, in yesterday's 300-mile nationwide series event, there were 12. We expect today we'll see the yellow flag maybe half a dozen times or so. So pit road's going to be open. Andy, for the opening run of the race, they are way past halfway in a fuel run. Yeah, it'll take a little more than one can of fuel, but two tires would still be quicker if they were track position. One thing I worry about doing that right now, especially after that hard lick from Casey Mears, is you're going to you saw that brake rotor. A lot of those parts could be out there that you can't see, and I'd hate to change the right sides and then have maybe a left side with a slow leak in it. That's something that some of the guys will be thinking about. But it is a, a still an opportunity to get two tires and get track position. Brian Patty, Clint Boyer's crew chief, told me this morning, you've got to play the game. And he meant this game, calling the race extremely well today, if you're going to win this thing or have a good finish. Here they are, Doc. All right, Denny Hamlin's at the little edgy on entry, little free on exit. So they're going to make a four-tire change so they can adjust the air pressure here on his 11 car. Fill it full of Snoco fuel. Left side. Tires going on now. They burn. Kyle Busch gets up third for two right side tires and Sunoco fuel chassis adjustment. Tight race car. Jamie. Eric Elmerle happy with his car. Right sides, one can of fuel, and he's gone. Vince. Mike Langenfeld, a change in the uh, front tire for the 16 car after their normal changer was sick. It's a two tire change. Track bar adjustment just a tick free for Greg Biffle at the start. Going to see mostly just right side tires at the front of the pack. A couple of guys have made four tire changes. Going to give up a lot of track position under this first caution. There is some good eating in Kansas City. Barbecue, terrific. Ooh, that looks good. Picture Big Brad down in the pit studio now saying, Get me some. That's his right there. I mean. <laughs> It has not been a weekend where anyone's probably lost any weight <laughs> hanging around Kansas City as we welcome you back to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Hollywood Casino 400 and remind you to check out NASCAR.com slash race buddy to watch coverage live from Kansas Speedway. Follow your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. 
Double it up for the restart. Reminder of the big old tires, NHRA Nationals from Las Vegas. Next weekend qualifying, 1.30 a.m. Saturday, ESPN2. And the big old tires, NHRA Nationals finals next Sunday at 8 Eastern time, also on ESPN2. Next Sunday, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series from Martinsville, the paperclip, 1 Eastern time. Next weekend, another wild card race in the chase. Martinsville next Sunday. Can't wait. Denny Hamlin from 6th to 19th with getting four tires, Doc. Yeah, let's check in with Darian Grubb. And uh, Darian gave up quite a bit of track position, taking four versus others taking two. Why'd you do that? Uh, we got 232 laps to go, and we're doing our adjustments early so we can play the games later. What he was talking about with being free in and free off, did you have to take four to be able to make that adjustment? We really didn't have to, but we really wanted to get a good read on a car here early to try to figure out what's going on with the race car and what adjustments work so we'll be faster at the end. All right, an adjustment early on. Lost some track spots, but they hope it'll pay off in the long run, A.B. Yes. All right, Doc, thanks. Seemed pretty confident in that decision. Looking at the restart order, top of the screen, there were only seven teams that took four tires, and they're all well back in the field. Denny Hamlin being among them, who got the four tires. And Hamlin aggressive there, bottom of the screen in that black number 11, three wide and gets a couple of spots into turn one. Al Bush is trying to lead, Eric Almirola not wanting to give this spot up. He likes it out front. Whoa, hang on there, Kyle. Wow, that 43 is strong. Ryan, let me show a little muscle there on the bottom. These guys showing up here, uh, you don't have to be a part of the chase to want to win this race out here today. Almirola clears Kyle Busch. Ryan Newman trying to work to the inside of Kyle for second. 39 car. I've had a little contact between uh, the 17 and the 55. And look at this scramble. They're all over the place. Four wide here. <laughs> oh, that's close. In fact, Mark Martin got forced out of the groove and then kind of caused a big scramble right there in that group. Mark was running sixth. Here it is. Ah, it's just the arrow that we were talking about. We saw this a couple of times yesterday in the nationwide race. What looked like some contact, he was just getting right there. We're seeing these cars run closer together. And I'm looking going down the front straight away. They're four wide. Wow. Racing side by side with Almirola for, for the lead after the restart to spinning through the trioval grass and bringing out the caution. He may have got away with it. Didn't see any damage? Turn your radiator fan off. Shake it. See if you can get the grass up your grill. Yeah, that started back in the corner as he tried to to exit. It was in the gas hard, but you can see the car wiggling. It was just a matter of trying to keep it off the wall, and Kyle did a great job of that. Wow. this yesterday a little bit with these hard tires and this is what has to be done with I uh, keep talking about a hard tire it's not that they're too hard but this is what has to be done on a new surface or you're going to get into a blistering situation but with them being hard and especially now that the temperature has cooled off a little bit when this thing slips just a little bit the driver really can't catch up fast enough you see that little bit of a wiggle and then the next thing is the car is turning around well, I talked to uh, Brian Petty actually before the race started. He's talking about too that to, to make these cars go fast on these kind of tracks and these surfaces, it puts you in a really tight box. I heard him say that, and that the setup is very, very edgy, and so you can be really fast and be right, but if you get just a little off, boy, it's hard to handle. Now, last week in Charlotte, 
we saw a series of quick cautions and during that Paul Wolf for Brad Keselowski got off schedule on his pit stops and made up a lot of track position and got his car to the front to the point that they lead the most laps they were just in on pit road not uh, what seven laps ago yeah that's not quite enough laps plus he's already made his way up to 11. I mean, he's made up a ton of track position here. He's passing cars. Cars really good right now. I'd stay out if I was him. Yeah, I think he might be able to get now. there the old-fashioned yeah. way today. Yep. Pit road open to the lead lap cars. You might see some of the guys coming from the back, but leaders are going to stay out. No takers for a long way back. Maybe not any takers at all. Early in the going here in the heartland at Kansas Speedway. It's been a little bit of a wild and willing race so far. In race six of the chase, Casey Mears hard into the outside wall in that 13 car, bringing out the first caution, a little pitch strategy on that yellow flag, and then Kyle Busch bringing out yellow number two, spinning from second place off of turn number four down into the trioval grass. Scott Speed, free pass on the first yellow, no free pass on the second caution. Our telecast today presented by Ram. And we come to the restart with Eric Almarola on the inside lane, the race leader getting a good jump on Ryan Newman. Newman hanging tough on the outside for a challenge from Jimmy Johnson for second. The A.J. Allmendinger back there make, trying to make a move on Craig Biffle. Allmendinger having a great run here. Got that 51 car up in fifth spot right now. Lisa Kane trying to make that higher line work. He saw Craig Biffle go by him earlier and Biffle right in front of him. Logano thought Logano was going to look down a little lower there for three wide. Here's a couple wide behind him. Martin Truex Jr., 56, and the championship leader, Brad Kozlowski, in the two. That's ninth place that just changed hands. Three wide. Casey Kane in that five had all kind of troubles getting up off of turn number two. Yeah, it looks like they still just don't have this car tightened up enough for Casey Kane yet. People talked to me in the garage this morning and yesterday about how critical restarts were going to be from behind the wheel. That because of the aerodynamics and the speed and the hard tires and the, all of the, the different elements that go into today's race, when you're doubled up for that restart and they wave the green flag, you must be aggressive and get everything you can as quickly as you can. Yeah, and it's the most tense moments as a driver. As you can see right there, Casey Kane getting a little bit loose again. Martin Truex trying to take advantage, going to the apron, try to make this pass. Not going to quite get there this time, but really a tense moment. You're jacked up for this, the double final restart. You know there's not a lot of racing room, but it's the opportunity that you really have to strike. Jimmy Johnson clearing Ryan Newman for second place. 48 car. Steady and solid in the opening laps. And already Almarola, look at the gap he's opened up while they raced for second place. Yeah, that car has shown speed right from the very beginning. And then as we saw in a longer run in that first uh, timeout, that uh, the car didn't fall off much. So Eric Almarola's got a nice car. Brad Kizos is trying to make this outside work. He got up a little higher down in three and four in the last lap than what I think he really wanted to. That allowed Clint Boyer to get to his inside, but now he's able to pull away. It's 10th place for Kislowski, who started back in 25th. Seems like what I've seen so far, that, that second lane is a little better in one and two than it is in three and four. Saw that camera makes the day the way those cars are sliding around there in turn two. <laughs> and we see these cars, yeah, keep inching up higher and higher too. 
Joey Logano, 20. Casey Kane, 5. Seventh and eighth places. Logano's been really solid in this chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. No, not eligible for the championship, but he's got top 10 finishes in all but the Talladega race in the chase so far. It's like Casey Kane starts trying to come back to him a little bit. Like I say, you have a loose race car. A lot of times it takes five or 10 or 12 laps for it to come in on these restarts. They work there for seventh and eighth. Up front, Almirola works to try and extend his advantage over Jimmy Johnson. As Johnson, now clear of Ryan Newman, tries to track him down. About to complete the 53rd lap of 267. In today's race, our telecast presented by Ram. Back at Kansas Speedway, this newly repaved and reconfigured Kansas Speedway, we are 59 laps complete with Eric Almirola in that Richard Petty Motorsports number 43 car out front. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear from pit lane to victory lane. Every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Five-hour energy rapid recap. Going to get us caught up on what has happened so far. There's a lot going on with this new track. Lots of variables, Brad. Yeah, it really is and uh, we're seeing some passing lanes, a lot of speed. Eric Almirola has been extremely stout, but guys really trying to figure out where they can get comfortable and run. Tell you what, this track is finally, finally starting to come around. Like you talked about, the second group is starting to come in. We saw Kyle Busch spin out, though, off a of turn four, which is a big surprise because the track looked good, and then he just lost it all by himself. There were some people who were afraid that this track would be a single groove track. So not the case. No, so not the case. A single groove on the track. Those guys are double wide on the apron. Everything we've talked about before the show is happening. We're getting too wide racing, but we are seeing some very loose race cars. Eric Almirola out front by nearly two seconds, but right behind him, one of the chasers. Let's get up to speed with them, Dave. 10-4 on the loose race cars. That includes second place Jimmy Johnson right now. He just radioed in to his crew that the car is loose. And the response back was all the way through. He says, well, when I'm exiting the corner and I'm getting fully on the gas, then it's fine. But other than that, 48 car is loose, Vince. Well, running in third place on the track is Greg Biffle. Biffle came into this race sixth in points, but he's been hot lately, gained five positions the last two races, and they knew they had a good race car again today, and Biffle has proven it. They did make a track bar adjustment on that first stop, but Biffle says it's real good right now, Doc. Running back in fourth spot, uh, Matt Kenseth, uh, not worried about winning a championship, pretty much out of it. They're worried about trying to run up front and win races. They changed two tires when they came in, and Matt says uh, after air pressure out of the front, the car really loose on entry. Hard to get the car in using the throttle. Vince. Casey Kane started on the pole, but right now he's running seventh. He drops back almost immediately. The car's been hitting the splitter at the beginning of the run, but then as the run goes, the car comes to him. Kane just radioed. We're getting a lot better right now. Casey Kane currently running seventh. Jamie? And Martin Truex Jr. started this race 16th, running ninth right now. Remember, back here in June, he was the class of the field. He led 173 laps, only to be passed with 30 to go and ended up second. They're here for redemption. The car's been a little tight, but going forward, Dave. Great recovery so far for the championship leader, Brad Keselowski, coming into today's race. Started 25th, took on two right side tires on that first run. It was tight in the first run. This run, though, quite a bit looser. Brad has radioed in another one of those cars that's a little bit too free, Doc. How about Kansas Clint back in 11th spot? Uh, he grew up in the farm country of Kansas, and that's appropriate because right now, Clint said, this car is plowing. He said, I, I can't get in the corner. The car will not turn coming up off, although basically he has uh, now moved up to the top of the racetrack in turns one and two and said just now he is finding some more speed up there. Now back behind him as far as chases are concerned, Denny Hamlin, who was running six, took four tires, restarted back in 19th, and now has gained a couple of spots. Denny's issue right now is that the car is just too loose to run up high. They told Denny, if you can move the car up a little bit, we can get more speed. He said, I can't get up there right now. I am just very loose. James. And Jeff Gordon started this race 19th, running 18th right now. Before the last stop, he said he was a little tight on throttle. And when they came in, they took right sides and fuel. And then his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, said, that was my fault. We should have taken fuel only. Right now, Jeff Gordon saying he has a little bit of vibration, and he's lost some grip, Vince. 
Tony Stewart qualified 33rd, didn't get a good qualifying lap, so they knew there was going to be a big challenge for them making their way up through the field, especially with this narrow groove. Car started tight. They put a spring rubber in the right rear on that first stop. And Tony says right now the front end just is not working good enough. Whether or not that's something that's aero related or car related, they're still trying to figure that out. The 29 of Kevin Harvick, he says it's just way too loose. They did come in and top off earlier, so they've got about an eight or nine lap advantage from that perspective on the competition. They say their cars are better than what their finishing results have been in the chase. Still haven't scored their first chase top 10 Nicole six chasers in the top 10 but they're all chasing one driver and that is Eric Almirola who at this point in the race has been out front for 61 laps we're at lap 69 with green flag pit stops coming up more from the new Kansas Speedway coming up in just a few minutes Caution flag is out again here at the Kansas Speedway for trouble in turn number three, A.J. Allmendinger's car. About to be towed away after a very hard impact. You see A.J. is out of the car and okay. Watch that red and white 51 car. Just as he's entering three, right front tire, let's go. Hard impact into the wall, but he is out of the car and okay. Yeah, one thing though, he felt something it looked like earlier and he had, it slowed down some down the back straightaway. So maybe it wasn't quite as hard as it could have been. Fortune had a really, really good run going to this point. Odd. Casey Mears had a right front problem in turn two earlier. And now Almendinger's. And both were after 31 laps of green flag racing. Yeah. Coincidental, but just um, odd. It, it seems like these new repave tracks are hard on any tire. I don't care who, who it is. It's just they're just so hard to build tires for and the speeds are so high. And... Uh, just presents a ton of challenges, and if you uh, don't have that setup exactly right, it can overwork one tire. Yeah, and if you don't get your car exactly right, it's always tempting to put that a little bit more camber in that right front if you yep. were having a turning problem. Maybe. Yeah, you know why? Because it's worth speed. Yes. <laughs> Last pit stops at lap 33. Pit road will be open 40 laps later at lap 73. And we expect about everyone to be in. There were a handful of cars that came in on lap 42, but again, that's been already some... 30 laps of racing. Eric Almarola, Jimmy Johnson, Greg Biffle, Matt Kenseth, Ryan Newman, the top five. And here they come, Doc. Yeah, Matt Kenseth said, guys, I'm still free on entry, but don't touch it, so leave it alone. There's going to be four tires topping off with an Oco fuel. Dave Burke. Jimmy Johnson said the exit of the corner was good, running in second place, but going in into the center of the car was loose. They'll do two tires again for the 48, Jamie. And the 43, he has been great, already led 65 laps today. Right size and fuel will be the call. No adjustments, Vince. For Greg Biffle, Matt Pusher, the crew chief, encouraging him, get the wheel straight as he enters the box. Clean in and clean out. Greg wanted no changes. They're going to make right side tire change, and that is it. Filling it up with Sunoco fuel. And a lead change on the pit lane. Jimmy Johnson out ahead of Eric Almirola. Another strategy session on the pit lane under caution here at the Kansas Speedway. And the leader in control of the restart will be the five-time champ, Jimmy Johnson. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Kansas is presented by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. Wrapping up the third caution of today's 400 miler at Kansas Speedway, our telecast presented by Ram. We are going racing in one more lap. Check in on how our drivers are doing in AT&T's fastest driver challenge. Out of the top four qualifiers, Mark Martin running closest to the front. Remember to text FAST to 34763 and play AT&T's fastest driver challenge or visit attfastestdriver.com. You can have a chance to win four Gs just by playing. So pit road didn't go quite as smoothly for everyone on this round of pit stops. Tony Stewart will be at the back of the field for this restart. He had a little passenger when he left the pit lane. But the crew forgot to get the wrench out for the wedge adjustment they made. Have to come back and get it out. Feel free at any point, guys, to get your heads out of your asses. Well, there you go. All speaking. 
Yeah, he would have started 16th on this restart. If that hadn't happened. And right there with Tony at the back of the pack will be Greg Biffle in the 16 car who came off the pit lane fourth, but was speeding, exiting the pit lane, and will go all the way back to 31st position. First pit road speeding penalty of the year for Greg Biffle. Now, I will say this, with the repave, all the pit road timing lines are in different places than they were. The zones are different. All the teams after the Pocono race, after the first race after the repave, where there were so many pit speeding penalties, they all knew well about it, and they were all over it, so I'm not going to blame it on that. I'm just pointing that out for disclosure. Big jam on the restart. Almirola had trouble getting going in the 43. He didn't have any trouble getting off turn two. Yeah. But it did stack things up behind him. They've got the single file back for about 12 cars. Brad Kozlowski, the championship leader, back in 16th position. Shuffling and scrambling around him. Trying to gain all they can in the first few laps on this restart. Yeah, this is not where Brad Kozlowski wants to be right now. He'd gotten himself out of that position. And they took four tires on their pit stop and they put them back. Carl Edwards with a big run there. How about that strategy with the two, Dave? I was going to say, the car passing him, Carl Edwards, they took four tires as well. For Brad, though, it was as much about a little track bar adjustment as well. They went down on that. Now the car was just a little bit loose at the very end of that run. Look at Montoya. And right now what it's about for Brad is being pinned in behind Kevin Harvick, who looks like he's struggling a little bit. Look at the back end of that 29 car twitching yeah, you around. you can see Harvick really having a tough time with this car. It, like the two is going to get by him here. Kenseth also got uh, four tires on that last stop, and that put him back in the pack a little bit. Trying to make up some ground, as is Kyle Busch, who, remember, was running second when he spun out and went all the way back to 33rd a few laps back at lap 40, Dave. Allen had made his way up to 22nd and gained another 10 positions on pit road when they didn't change tires. They just took on fuel, made a slight adjustment for a car that was tight in the front end, but those no tire, that no tire change is costing him right now. Yeah, I'll tell you, tell you, when you put fuel in and, and no tires, always going to make you a little bit loose on the start. You see Kyle really fighting this. And Andy, what we've seen, I'd be a little skeptical of not putting right sides on. Well, I, I would do it. Uh, since we've seen a couple of problems already, I would really want to put uh, right side tires on my car every time I got a chance. Just so I wouldn't have the most laps on mine as we go through these cycles. Joey Logano and Kyle Busch for 14th and 15th positions. Jimmy Johnson out in front. Eric Almirola there. Now clear of the traffic. Trying to chase him back down in second. We've just gone back racing from the third caution of the day when A.J. Allmendinger had a hard contact. We have trouble off turn four. Jeff Burton. And yeah, Burton tagged them all pretty good off turn four. Caution is out. Right front fender damage, y'all. Uh, it's rubbing. Right front fender is busted. At 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Nah, it, it hit pretty hard. Jeff Burton had a wiggle, a wobble, and then a hit. And the caution is out for the fourth time. Cleaning up from the third. All right, let's take a look at this first. You're going to see him get sideways here. Jamie Murray up on the high side, but Burton's down the bottom. See Tony Stewart up. Uh, may have been a little contact right there. So this is the fourth yellow. The third yellow involved A.J. Allmendinger, who has come from the infield medical center, Jamie. Well, I asked him if he's okay because he did stumble getting out of the car, and you said it was a big hit. But you felt it coming. Where did you? Where did it start? Um, it was getting tied the last couple laps, but I thought that was just kind of how the racetrack was going. I had that in the first run, and then I went into the turn one and felt it get really tight. And actually radioed, radioed in and said, I'm pitting this lap. 
and uh, tried to check up down the back straightaway to try to save it, make sure it didn't blow, and unfortunately it did. And uh, I just feel bad. Everybody at Phoenix Racing, James Finch, Hendrick Horsepower, car was really fast. We were we were running so well, and uh, I thought we could have had an easy top ten, if not a top five. And um, just so disappointed. These guys work so hard. This small group of guys, they've been through a lot this year. They work their butts off. I've really enjoyed it. I hope I'm in the car next week. I don't know. But uh, if not, James Finch, uh, everybody at Chevy and Hendrick, give me this opportunity. It's meant the world to get back in this sport. I love the sport. And I hope I'm back next week. But if not, I thank uh, James and Steve Barkdahl, everybody, for what they've done for me. All right, A.J. Allmendinger, no plans beyond today, Alan. Jamie, thanks. Good to see A.J. okay. The pit road is open. Does not appear we have any takers except for the championship leader, Brad Kozlowski, who is going to dive in as Jeff Burton's crew works to repair that 31 car. After this, trouble in turn four, big trouble. Yeah, I'm not sure that Burton didn't have to check up right there a little bit and Tony Stewart got into the back of him. Yeah, you can see right there, he kind of chased up the hill and maybe checked up and looks like Tony had a little bit of run on him. How about it, Dave? Part of the discussion between Brad and Paul, Brad saying a little concerned about all these guys uh, blowing their tires. Paul saying, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about you starting behind all these guys. And all of a sudden, it was two is on pit road. So they went ahead and changed four tires. That didn't look like they're going to give up a lot. They were already 20th in line. They didn't give up a lot by coming to pit road. So not a bad move. So championship story on the day so far. Brad Kozlowski started 25th, worked his way up into the top 10, then uh, got shuffled back by some strategy on uh, the lap 73 pit stops when they took four tires and a lot of other people took fuel only or just right side tires. And now he's pitting again here and is going to go to uh, pretty well the back of the line. And we still have 32 cars on the lead lap. While his title rivals Jimmy Johnson and Denny Hamlin are running respectively first for Johnson. And for Denny Hamlin eighth. It's still very early in the day though. Oh yeah we've seen so much switching around and the strategy is going to change throughout this day but uh, obviously track position means a lot but they also know that they can pass you just can't put yourself in a position get right back in the middle from that 20th on back. Doubling up for the restart. With Jimmy Johnson in command of this restart and saving some fuel along the way. Let's take an inside look and get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app and truly unlimited data on the Sprint Network. Jimmy Johnson has turned the fastest speed today. Check this number out, 182 mile an hour average. Well in excess of 190 miles an hour into the corner. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with live in-car audio and real-time stats on the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app only from Sprint. Get the app and Sprint's truly unlimited data plan at Sprint.com slash speed. Restarts have been pretty interesting so far. Yeah, and this one could be the mo one of the most interesting. You've got your, some heat in your tires, but they've cooled off. Really easy to spin your tires right here, get things really jammed up and have a problem on this front straightaway. So Alvarola in that 43 car, spin his tires on the last restart, but everybody got away with it. Easy to start one of those accordion crashes in the field, though, when they're all bunched up like this. Second time we've seen uh, Kurt Busch at 78 make a bold move down on the bottom. He's like he figured something out on these restarts. Yeah, he's pretty racy here today. Got this car up uh, near the top five. Mark Martin 55, Clint Boyer 15 for third, while Almarola tries to press Johnson for the race lead. And here's Kurt Busch again, looking for that apron. It's 
close there. That's close. Yeah, Mark Martin was wanting to get his car back down to the bottom. But you can see his teammate, Martin Truex Jr., had a nice run there, and Mark decided to give just a little bit of room there. Regan Smith from the 88 started way back in the pack. 39th place. And he's working his way up into this league group. Or Casey Kane there in that five car still has his hands full this race car especially on these restarts But it looks even more so this time almost like he's got a tire down Giving up a spot to Marcus Ambrose Ryan Newman now Kyle Busch to his inside Vince That five of Casey Kane continues to have an issue with the splitter Especially early in the run and Casey said it feels like he's got a vibration particularly on exit but he's not sure if it's hitting the splitter or what the case is. You see the left front. That's where he's complaining about. It feels like it's just dragging the splitter, upsetting the balance of the car, certainly giving him the handful, especially early in the run. He feels like it comes to him a little bit later, guys, and it gets faster, but it's a handful now. Yeah, he's given up way too much on these uh, restarts, though, for it to come back later on. Six positions on this restart alone. Tony Stewart, Greg Biffle trying to work their way back from the problems on the last round of pit stops. Running 18th and 19th now. They were 31st and 32nd on the restart after the third caution and now Stewart is up into the 17th position just shy of 150 miles today at Kansas Speedway the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series presented by Ram Jimmy Johnson is out in front Jimmy Johnson leading Race number six in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup at the Kansas Speedway presented by Ram today. Eric Almarola right with him. Almarola dominated the first 100 miles of this race, led 66 of the 98 laps that have been run so far today. But Johnson getting a lead on an exchange of pit stops a little while ago and has managed to outpace Almarola through two subsequent restarts. Coverage of Monday Night Football continues tomorrow on ESPN. First at 6.30, it's Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's. Then at 8.30, an NFC North rivalry renewed when Calvin Johnson and the Lions make their way to Soldier Field to take on Brandon Marshall and the Bears. Monday Night Football, Lions and Bears, tomorrow at 8.30 on ESPN. So the five-time champ, Jimmy Johnson, out in front of this race on the newly resurfaced, slightly reconfigured Kansas Speedway. Johnson coming into the race, seven points behind Brad Kozlowski in the championship, seven positions on the racetrack. But right now, Johnson is running first. Kozlowski is running 24th. Yeah, it looks like he's just riding a little bit. He, he made that pit stop to get four tires. I don't know if they're just trying to be in uh, defensive mode here. If they saw a couple of those tire failures. Thought maybe they'll just ride a little while. We'll keep an eye on him here and see if he picks it up if he gets close to being a, a lap down, but he's not nearly up to pace right at this point. Denny Hamlin running in 11th position. The old as they run. <laughs> it's coming. It's all be cool here. Feel like an Eskimo. I'm so cold. You're doing fine, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Joey Meyer, the spotter up there, saying he's he's plenty cool. And the driver telling him, be cool. We're okay. And really, for, for a group that's not been in the pressure of this championship before, you just wonder, or at least I do, when the pressure really is going to begin to build, when they're going to start to feel it. And walking around the garage area, we all kind of collectively thought, today they might be beginning to start to feel it that we're in the second half of this chase it'd be unnatural not to feel some pressure especially at this point never won a championship and this team trying to get that first one five to go and they're leading the points but it's how they handle the pressure how are they going to handle it from here this is going to be a tough race to get through and uh 
We'll just see how they handle it from here. Yeah, well, and it's no different than Jimmy Johnson and Chad Canal. There's pressure on them, and they've won five championships. But it's still, it's about this year. It doesn't make any difference what you did in the past. Here's an opportunity right in front of you. You have five races to get it done, and you're going to feel that pressure until that last lap at Homestead and whoever's the champion. And the Ben there done that group leading this race with uh, Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss having that experience behind them to know what to expect over these final five weeks. So you think you want us to free up a little bit, huh? We still want to get sucked into thinking we're better than we are for the end, you know? The entry to three is still could be a little sketchy from time to time, but as soon as I land and load up the car, get a little bit better to run it. Chad and Jimmy talking about where they're at at this point, 150 miles into this race. Noteworthy performance so far in the race. Besides Al Marola, who's led the most laps, would be Regan Smith in this 88 car, who started back in 39th position, subbing for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Had a real scare in qualifying the other day when this car bobbled terribly on him at 200 miles an hour. Saved it, started in the back, and he is all the way up inside the top 10 as we take an inside look and get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Brought to you by the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app and truly unlimited data on the Sprint Network. Regan Smith, biggest mover in the race so far. There it is. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with live in-car audio and real-time stats on the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app. Only from Sprint. Get the app and Sprint's truly unlimited data plan at Sprint.com slash speed. Dave, they have to be pretty pleased so far. AB, I've got a theory. Uh, quick review. Who's leading the race? Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Okay, the seat in Regan Smith's car is an exact copy <laughs> of Jimmy Johnson's. The shell, the insert, everything except a little lowering of the headrest is exactly the same. So that may be why Regan's running so well. His car wouldn't turn before the last stop on lap 73. They put on four tires, adjusted a little. At this point, he's reporting he needs a little rear grip. But uh, you could say he's driving like a champ right now for a good reason. Oh, very nice. So if, yeah. get, so if he gets off a little bit, Dave, they need to put some more padding in the seat instead of a little wedge. <laughs> and he's got a four-time champ right behind him, Jeff Gordon. They're talking about Regan Smith, uh, confirmed before the start of the race today by Rick Hendrick that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been cleared by NASCAR to return to competition next week in Martinsville. So now Regan is uh, of an uncertain future in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, although the rumors continue to persist that we will see him in the NASCAR Nationwide Series next year, perhaps competing for the championship there. I know there's only so many really good rides out there, but this is a driver that has a lot of talent and, and deserves a first-class ride just like this is. He's proven he drove into the top ten last week at Charlotte before the engine expired. Uh, he's done a nice job here today. Uh, he has a lot of talent, and with the right race team, uh, he could challenge and, and win races like we saw him do win the race at Darlington uh, back a couple of years ago. Jeff Gordon going to try and pick up a spot on Regan Smith here. That'll be eighth position. Jeff Gordon is a car that uh, certainly is showing more today than he did in any practice yesterday. They've worked a lot on the car, made a lot of changes. We're not very happy with what they had, but uh, that's a good showing going so far. There's your leader, Jimmy Johnson. Eric Almarola right with him. Under the green here at Kansas. A little bit of a long green flag run here at Kansas, and so it's about time for the pit crews to go to work again. Some have had more work to do than others during the course of the day. Kyle Busch's team, after that spin through the grass, having to tune him up, and Brad Keselowski's team with the four-tire change, an extra stop, if you will, a little while ago that put him back in the pack and gives him a little further to run on this green flag than some of the front runners like Jimmy Johnson. There's the race for the lead. 48-43. Johnson and Eric Almarola. Impressive, impressive drive for this 43 team today. Richard Petty Motorsports announcing here this weekend they'd re-sign with Ford for next week, uh, for next season rather. And race leader Going to hit the pit lane. 
That transition Rusty was talking about on NASCAR countdown that's a little abrupt on a green flag stop. And uh, Jimmy Johnson just made the turn, Dave. Remember earlier he was talking about uh, his car being good on landing and then off the corner, so a little edgy in. They had a wrench in their hand earlier, the crew did, so as he gets four tires, you'll see wedge adjustment in the left rear of the 48 car. This all happening on lap 119 for Jimmy, and he leaves. Jamie. And Mark Martin in the 55 getting his call down pit road too tight is what we're hearing up and down pit road is the problem as the run goes on they get tighter four tire call here for the 55 of Mark Martin he's had a great car today. And guys what a run for Kurt Busch 29th all the way to third they've only changed right side tire twice left side has now been on for 120 laps. He was getting a vibration here three laps to go. This pissed off good to come at a better time. First four tire stop of the day for Kurt Busch in the furniture row team. Jamie. Martin Truex Jr. said he was just getting a little snug, not really tight yet. Four tire call for him as well. They'll fill him up with Sunoco fuel, and he's been good to go. Car up the track in turn two. It was the leader, Eric Almarola. You saw it on the right side of the screen. He's gotten into the wall with the right front corner of that 43 car. Went one lap too far. Caution, man. And the caution flag for debris from the 43 car. That's a tough break for that team as well. A great car. I catch a lot of guys though that just made pit stops. Tony Stewart, NASCAR calling out, is okay to pass the caution car because he was past the point on pit road you needed to be. I was waiting to hear from them there, but I thought Tony uh, was okay. Clint Warrior, the leader, looked like he was ahead of him there. So again, a third time today, a car seems to have trouble on the right front. This time, it was the guy who's led more than anyone else in this race, Eric Almarola, and he was leading. Hmm. Yeah, it wasn't like that tire exploded, but you could see that uh, that's exactly what happened with it. And a tire issue there of some kind. As a driver at that point in time, you're just kind of along for the ride. Brakes don't do much good. Uh, you steer it as hard left as you possibly can. There's just too much momentum. So you see Tony Stewart coming by the pace car there. Again, there are two spots on pit road that you have to be ahead of the leader at without violating the pit road speed limit. One is the start finish line, the center line on pit road. The other is the scoring line at the exit of pit road. And Tony Stewart was to the good of that. And that's why he's being sent back around the pace car. And uh, for this 43 team, Jamie, that's heartbreaking. Well, it is, Alan, and we started telling the story earlier before the caution came out, but he got into the wall yesterday in happy hour, and that's why they were working on the right-hand side of that car, so they had a lot of cosmetic damage already, and now it looks just like it did yesterday. He didn't say any indication of what led to him getting into the wall this time, but he is saying on the radio right now they need to come in and fix the toe. Yeah, Could they, be a big problem. They got some problems with that right front, Jamie. It's, uh, it's been, it looks like the lower control arm and some other pieces. They may have to spend some time in the garage fixing it. So, fifth caution of the race, and three of them for right fronts going down uh, significantly into a green flag run. And part of Casey Mears, A.J. Allmendinger, and now the leader at the time, Eric Almarola. The other two cautions, the spin by Kyle Busch while running second, and Jeff Burton getting turned into the wall off of turn number four. Uh, we talked about how quickly things have changed. Didn't we just show a while ago points as they run, which means nothing yet, but Jimmy had like a 20-point lead over Keselowski. Well, now, with Jimmy making a pit stop, he would be back in third spot, 19 points behind. So that's 39 points just in a matter of a couple of laps. And that whole picture will change again after these pit stops and wave arounds and a few other things that happen. Kansas Clint comes in as a leader, right side tire. They've only changed right twice. They're going to come around this time for the first time today and change all four tires. Dave. 
fourth place Regan Smith. They're going to fix the exit with a track bar adjustment. And because the fuel is going to take 11 seconds, they're going to take four tires. Jamie. Jeff Gordon just said, I don't know what I just hit, but something in the front end. So they're going to take a look at that. Four tires and fill it up with fuel, Vince. Greg Biffle, bottom right of your screen, a two-time winner here. He's been real fast, but he had a pit lane speeding penalty on the previous stop. Says it's starting to get a little bit too tight. He made a track bar adjustment for tire change. Andy, you're the crew chief, and you've seen some of these right side issues. Are you going to take four every chance you get now, or are you going to stick with just the, the rights a lot? I don't, I'm don't. i not worried about the left side too much. I'm just going to make sure that every time I come down pit road, definitely put on right side tires. And it's kind of be, need to be in a little defensive mode, especially if you're one of these point leaders, especially Brad Keselowski's team. I think they're doing a pretty good job. They made a pit stop a while ago, which put them a little out of sync with some of the other leaders that had them with less laps on their right side than anybody else that run. Jimmy Johnson now is back in 24th. 43 did hit the wall, boss. There was some debris in three. I think he hit it. He hit these balls every racetrack we go to, and they don't throw caution. Chad yeah. Canales. A little frustrated. They didn't need to see the caution for sure right here, but it did need to come out. So the running order shuffled up as of uh, a result of the caution coming in the middle of a series of green flag pit stops. Clint Boyer was the race leader at the yellow flag, and he's our ESPN in race reporter today. Plant Dale Jarrett, you with us? Okay. Well, it looks like you've got a pretty good day going so far. I know it didn't get started off the way you wanted, but it uh, looks like the car's a lot better now. Yeah, yeah I about lost it down in the first uh First corner of the first lap, that'd have been real, real nice. But uh, just gotta keep plugging away. We'll bounce back pretty good. Um, got a little good fortune there. So just gotta keep it going, Bubba. Hey, Clint, uh, much change with the racetrack that you've seen here so far? South side lines widened out uh, for sure. Um, you know, just trying to be careful with the tires. You know, it's still green up there for the most part. I'm trying not to run up there if I don't have to, but. Let's see what this clean air does right here. Sure, sure was a lot happier in third right there running in clean air than I was back there in 13th or wherever I was. So keep digging and have some fun. All right, you have fun. Thanks for talking with us, man. Thanks, brother. Clint Boyer, the race leader under the caution flag here at his home track, Kansas Speedway. Clint racing on the dirt tracks in this area and working at an auto dealership with dreams of being a big time racer not all that many years ago and now in the middle of a fight for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Championship. And he sure would love for this race to turn out like last weekend's race did in Charlotte. When Boyer and his crew chief Brian Patty worked the strategy just right. Well, they sure did. They didn't have a really good car in the beginning of the race and actually Clint said it was terrible. But they turned it around, made good pit strategy, came home with the win. Yeah, and I think Clint Boyer's story is a perfect example. It should be inspiration for young racers at short tracks around the country that, you know, if you continue to work hard and, and you find yourself in the right spot and can make the most of those opportunities that you get, just like Clint has, you can be here uh, winning Sprint Cup races. All right, well, Boyer's the leader behind the pace car. They've just waved guys around the pace car that had pitted under green and then were caught by the caution flag. They include Jimmy Johnson and Denny Hamlin. Along with Kurt Busch, Mark Martin, Martin Truex Jr., Carl Edwards. Those guys get wave arounds back onto the lead lap. Jamie McMurray also gets a wave around, but he is more than one lap down. And so that whole picture with Kozlowski running in the back, Johnson leading, and Hamlin in the top 10 now shuffles around as a result of the timing of the pit stops and the caution, where Brad Kay is in front of his closest pursuers for the championship. That's the way it is right now, but uh, that's one of the things about the wave round rule that we have now. It used to be that that was really a, a devastating thing if you got caught on pit road. Now it's not good. I mean, Jimmy was leading, but he's not down a lap. He is able to come around and be on the lead lap and just really loses the track position. So here is the restart order you see. Be Matt Kenseth alongside Clint Boyer at the front of the pack. Where championship guys are concerned, Brad Kozlowski's going to be 11th, Jimmy Johnson 21st, and Denny Hamlin 27th as we get set to go back to green.
look at Matt Kenseth with the run around the outside up into the lead. Three wide right behind him. Paul Menard there in the middle. Bill just blast by. That 16 has been fast today. See Paul Menard up in fourth spot. First race back for Slugger Lavy. Doing a great job for this team. Getting it back on track. Crew chief has been coming back from a suspension by NASCAR for a technical violation. How about that move by Ryan Newman? Wow, did you see Kyle Busch have to jump on the brakes there? You could visibly see that 18 car slowing down. I'd say when it was slowing down, you could see the back wheels were sliding look like. Mm. See, just how many of them using that apron coming down the front straightaway to get some clean air on them, making a shorter way around and making passes, making a lot of speed. All this is from seventh place on back. Front six have sorted out single file. Casey Kane in that five continuing the trend of struggling in the first few laps after a restart. First handful of laps really. And the further they go then the car seems to settle in and get going. Yeah, this time actually seems like the best that I saw him. I watched him on the restart. It looked like he's been able to have a little bit more speed. That tells me they did something, maybe a packer in the front, get that splitter up off the, the racetrack there at the beginning. Marcos Ambrose in the nine. Kyle Busch in the 18, racing there for... The ninth and eighth positions. That little swing mid race so far for the time being working in the favor of Clint Boyer. Well back in the field, racing with Trevor Bain for 20th place. Uh-oh. Piece of duck work or something? Tell what that was. Yeah. Didn't seem to do any damage to the 17 car when he hit it. And we come to halfway. And Matt Kenseth is going to be your halfway leader. We check on Tony Stewart, who is back in 15th place, Vince. Well, it's been a bit of a bit of a been a bit of an adventure for Tony Stewart today trying to get that car to uh, handle as he started 33rd you see him up to 15th and they also had an issue just this past time on the yellow with, with their right rear take a listen all right but we had a right rear going flat it seems we were eight pounds down then so made some adjustments here see what we got now, they made a four-tire change and a wedge adjustment, but I just was talking to the tire guy on the uh, 14. They said they actually had run over some debris under caution. It punctured the sidewall. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson has hit the wall in turn four. And a race he was leading. A race he was leading just moments ago through a turn of events that put him back in traffic has put him in the wall. Get her into the garage here. I noticed Jimmy there as we showed him it back in the pack. Looked like his car was extremely loose in that situation where he was having some difficulty in trying to make passes. All right, guys, we're going to need a deck lid. Um, we'll stop here in our pit. Maybe we can take a look at it. Chad Knaus looking at what those pictures there, from us. I just got... And trying to get a look at his race car. 
And let's show you what uh, happened to Jimmy Johnson running 20th at the time. Well, he just swapped ends on him. And when you're back in the pack like that, I mean, your car just does not drive like it did when you were up in the in the first part of the field and maybe even up the lead like he was. So. Yeah, you're trying to make up some time, trying to get yourself back up there, make some passes. We saw Jimmy being very loose down in the uh, entry of turn three yesterday. Well, that thing just was snapping around. Hang on, baby. You see, he was really trying his very best to keep it out of the wall. He got back in the gas trying to get the tire spinning enough to keep it down and, and not back into the wall. Wasn't able to accomplish that though. Once again, just telling you, with this tire being so hard, and, and you were talking about having to run these cars on the edge, doesn't take much once it starts to get out from under you to get away from you. And, and the 48 car on the pit lane now. Just carry so much speed through the middle of the corner. They're carrying almost 180 miles an hour You're in or roll. better. You're in roll. Go, go, go. The slowest go, go, go. they're going. Well, pit road open for the leaders. Most all of them are staying out, but the big story at this point is that car coming at you off the pit lane. Jimmy Johnson, just seven points off the championship lead starting the day, and into the wall, just past halfway today here in Kansas. He was leading the race just a little while ago. Now Chad Knauss and company have some work to do to fix that up. We go NASCAR nonstop presented by Ram. As you have watched during NASCAR nonstop, the continued repair efforts by the 48 team on Jimmy Johnson's car. After the somewhat shocking turn of events here that uh, has changed his picture on the story of the day today. 200 miles into this race. Just before it, Johnson's the race leader. Now he's got a torn up race car. He does have that, but they've managed to do a lot of work here. And Make some nice repairs on this car. I don't know what it'll drive like. We'll have to see that. But, uh, man, how quickly things can change. So here's how the whole sequence went down. Jimmy was leading here at lap 119. He got the lead earlier in the race on pit road, held on to the lead through a couple of pit stops and restarts, came from 
the pit lane uh, from the lead to the pit lane. And just after his green flag stopped, Eric Almarola hit the wall, dropped debris on the track, and brought out the caution flag. That set Jimmy a lap down. He took the wave around, restarted in 21st, and then running 20th, had that crash in turn four. That's put us in the position we are right now. You can see just how bad that back end of that car was, but it looks nothing like that now. They've taken the hammers and everything else they could to it, and uh, it, from just looking from a distance, it looks reasonable here. Actually, it looks pretty good. I mean, for what it looked like. So far, you got to hand it to them. They just got to make sure that all these things stay on the car. Dave's got a close look there. Yeah, one thing that NASCAR is asking for is a, is a piece of structural integrity. I, I don't think I saw them put it on the, but they were talking about having a piece of metal put on the back. So even though they're making the repairs out here on pit road, NASCAR is still checking it over to make sure it's safe for Jimmy and for the rest of the competition. Yeah, Dave, one thing I was noticing as that car was in and the people were pushing around working on it, that spoiler, while firmly attached to the car, still seems to be able to move a lot, and that might affect, see how the left side of it there is wobbling a little bit? Yeah, you can see there's nothing there holding that much. Yeah. I see that where that gas uh, receiver is. I'm worried about that, too, how they're going to be able to take fuel. All right, so Jimmy coming back onto the racetrack and giving us flashbacks literally to a year ago when Johnson had a problem at Charlotte that cost him track position, put him back in the pack, and then this happened while he was trying to make up some of the lost ground. Yeah, this uh, was another instance where Jimmy got loose back in traffic, took a hard hit, but uh, pretty much ended their uh, chance at that sixth straight championship last year. Already a blow to what they're trying to get accomplished this year and getting back to championship point. Fortunately, Jimmy was okay after that hard hit. Certainly not nearly the severity of impact today, but again, another unexpected blow for Jimmy Johnson in 2012 as he races to rejoin the tail end of the field. So about to restart the Hollywood Casino 400 at Kansas, and we invite you to check out NASCAR.com slash RaceBuddy to watch coverage live from Kansas Speedway by following your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. I'm looking at it on TV, Jimmy. There's nothing wrong with that thing. Nothing. You might just have a little trouble looking out the rear window. Well, that's optimistic for sure. <laughs> well, Jimmy can't see that. No. He wants, well, what Chad wants him to do is drive hard. They've got to make some speed here if they can. I was just looking at that, Andy, to see yeah. if they were going to have any trouble getting fuel into the car or not. It doesn't look it. Yeah, that, that whole area right there is just not good. Well, still got 126 laps to go as we go back green. Matt Kenseth is the race leader. Gordon to second, Clint Boyer to third, side by side, 27 Menard, 16 Biffle for fourth. I don't believe any of them have turned three. Oop, got a car on the wall, Bobby Labonte. And everybody gets by okay. Uh, right rear, left rear. This will just give the 48 some more time to come in and uh, make some adjustments on the rear of that car. As Bobby Labonte will have to do to his Toyota. Bobby running in 30th position, the first car a lap down at the time of that spin. Looks like Bobby's got more damage than uh, Jimmy did. They're going to go to the garage. Hmm. Watch the bottom right of the screen for the 47 car. May have gotten a little help yeah. right there. See Jimmy Johnson just sliding by that. And so the caution is out for the seventh time in this race. <laughs> three cautions in the 400 miles back in April. We're not even at 300 miles yet. We've had seven today. 
the new Kansas Speedway proving a handful for some of these drivers and teams. Kansas Speedway and today's Hollywood Casino 400 under caution for the seventh time today as we look down from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear from pit lane to victory lane every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires Goodyear the official tire of NASCAR. So as we get ready to double up for the restart the championship picture Brad Kozlowski's running 10th. Jimmy Johnson running back in 28th, and Denny Hamlin's only in 23rd, Doc. Yeah, a lot of issues. Let's check with Darian Grubb. And Darian, you guys came in during the yellow moment ago. Now, if one out, pack her out, wedge in, track bar change, four tires. Why all the adjustments? What are you trying to battle here? Uh, you forgot the rubber in the left rear there. Oh, yeah, rubber in the left rear. Okay, now, now tell me what the problem is. We've been fighting a loose end the whole time. That's just what keeping Denny from charging a corner. We're not bad centering off. We are able to make a good time there to start the race, but we're just keep getting looser in as we go. So we made a big wholesale change. We're off sequence now because of the wave around and everything else, too. So hopefully we make the car a little better. All right, it's Darian. Let's check in with Vince. With the crew chief for Greg Biffle, Matt Pusha, and Matt, uh, you guys had that pit road speeding penalty, went to the back, and you've run back up to the front. How good is that car? I didn't really hear what you said, but uh, we've got a little taste of everything today, being back in traffic, being in clean air. I mean, the uh, Sherwin Williams Ford Fusion is pretty decent right now. We just need to get up here and get up and lead some laps. Got uh, stuck behind that 15 in that uh, last restart there, but I think we're pretty decent. We're kind of on either side of being too free or too loose, but uh, hopefully get up here and get some clean air and see what we got. Thanks, Matt. Alan? Greg Biffle coming back from a speeding penalty on a pit stop earlier that dropped him down to 33rd in the running order and a lot of this ground he made up under the green flag. That's a fast forward he's driving today. Well, it's not been a good idea to lead a lot of laps in this race. Jimmy Johnson, Eric Almirola have led the most laps. They've been the guys that have brought out the last uh, two of the last three caution flags and both have beaten up race cars now. And of course where Johnson is concerned the big impact pun not intended there on the picture and the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. A lot of time still to go in this race and in this chase, but that's what it looks like right now. Certainly a big shakeup in that, but uh, 
Brad Kozlowski's had his kind of adventure for the day, too, or so far it's been an adventure. I don't know what the end will hold. Another restart here. Yeah, and I don't think these drivers coming into this race he had any idea they'd be choosing the outside to restart, uh, even through the practice sessions. But that's what all the leaders are doing. Matt Kenseth is at right now. side of that two car if we can I mean, he might have just nudged the wall a little bit in that jam up off a of turn two looks clean though yeah okay just saw a little bit of smoke there maybe it was just the dust right up against the wall he was so close to it racing with Kyle Busch is Keselowski that's for ninth place Casey Kane, Joey Logano right behind them. Just joining us, Kyle Busch trying to come back from a spin out, running second earlier in the race. Three wide here. Not where the points leader wants to be. That's where he's not going to be. <laughs> he's backed off. Better not back off too quickly. That 14 car is still trying to charge. They've been working on this 14 all day long, even to the point that they worked so much they left a wrench in it at one time, had to come back in and get it out. But it's like they've got him a little more racy right now. Like I said at the start of the show, these other repays have been good to Tony Stewart. He's finished no worse than third in the last three of them. Martin Truex Jr., 56, now going to work on Kyle Busch to see if he can get that spot. That's 12th place. Yeah, Kyle Busch's car just has not been the same since he spun earlier. Obviously, he was a little too loose at that time, but I'm not sure what that slide through the grass may have damaged, but uh, just doesn't seem to be up to his liking. Not pictured, unscheduled stop for Juan Pablo Montoya, who had gone up to the wall and turned to a lap ago. And has brought his car onto and now off of the pit lane. Ryan Newman, Greg Biffle had a moment there. Racing for fifth and sixth place. You saw Newman get out a little wider than maybe he cared to, but gather it back up. Paul Menard there in second, having a great run here today. Yep. Looked like he was going to win the nationwide race yesterday. Had a great run, but just as they got ready for the last restart, ran out of fuel. Kurt Busch, he's still having a pretty strong run. Yeah, Kurt, one of the guys caught by the caution flag, just like Jimmy Johnson, just after the cycle of green flag pit stops started, had to take the wave around and go all the way to the back of the field. He was running his highest third earlier in the race. Yeah, Mark Martin there in the 55, same scenario. Got caught on that, but making his way back towards the front. Well, you're right. I believe they did get that five car fixed up. They had some problems with it hitting the racetrack earlier. Looks like they fixed all that. Casey Kane. Running in eighth position now, Regan Smith in the 88 has just been kicked back to ninth. So you having fun? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be having more fun with about six more spots than the first seven, wherever I'm running. Yeah, man, we're with you on that. Get it. I just got to get these restarts figured out because that's everything. I mean, we have a good restart. We go forward the whole run. We have a bad restart. Then, you know, just making up whatever I lost. There you go. Yeah, and it's always more fun when you're going forward. There's no doubt about that. But uh, he is doing a nice job with this car today. 88 car racing there now with Kislowski for ninth position, Dave. And he might consider this a bad restart. He lost two positions, and he radioed in right away. Hey, the front turns, but no rear grip in or off the corner. You probably want some grip in these corners. Ooh, trouble, turn one. Danica Patrick, Landon Castle tangled up. Castle going for a slide. Yeah, we did not hit anything. Did Patrick not hit anything. Wall. It looked like Danica had a chance of not hitting anything. Just 
back up on the track. Eighth caution is out. Bringing a pit road here has got some pretty heavy left front damage. Racing for 25th and 26th positions on the lead lap. And I saw that. It kind of looked like Castle went into turn one ahead of Patrick, and maybe she thought she could make a move underneath him, and things didn't go like she wanted it, wanted it to. Hey, this to the garage. Make sure you have oil pressure. Or maybe there's more to it. This is off turn four. I guess clear there. And she gets in on the bumper and but just mm. doesn't get off of him. Right, right there. there where you're talking and you yeah. just turn it left and lock it down. And she had a chance to not go up hit that wall if she just stayed on the brakes and kept it down there. Hmm. So she's trying to save it and just kept driving it until it uh, hooked to the right. Yeah, at that point right there is whenever you should just, as a driver, realize that this is a spin, lock it down, and you can come get four tires. And that's uh, the kind of things that you'll have to learn with these cars. So watching that leads me to believe there's something earlier that happened. This dude right here is getting awful brave. Still going to be down there. You're clear of him. Nice and smooth here. Easy. Easy, easy. Just keep it off the wall. Yeah, she certainly seemed to go in there with a purpose into the corner of at least sending a little bit of a message, but uh, ended up getting the worst end of it. This was earlier in the race. the rest of the story all right Jamie well as you saw there the two of them working their way through the field together Danica started in the very back she was complaining about Landon throughout the race and when this happened Greg Zipidelli her crew chief came on the radio and said you know better than to do that so obviously he saw her at fault there you see her now sitting in the garage trying to repair that 10 car all right Jamie thanks pit roads open for the leaders doc Leader on pit road, uh, they're going to be very, very close in their windows, guys. Right side tires, got to get it full of fuel. 15 car, Cliff Hoyer, no tires. Got to get full of snow to fuel. They got to go 55 laps to make it on one more stop. Jamie. Jeff Gordon has a great car today, much better than they anticipated. Right sides this time around, and they will put fuel in it. Vince? The 16 of Greg Biffle really likes his race car, says it's plenty fast. It's just too tough to pass. Right side tires only. The 17, the first one off pit road. He is the first one off pit road, but not everyone pitted under this caution flag. And we'll set that restart order for you in a minute. As we go NASCAR nonstop presented by Ram under caution, Danica Patrick and Landon Castle tangling.
awful lot of oil dry down here at Kansas Speedway. The cloud as they try and vacuum up the excess and get it blown off the racetrack. And we continue under the eighth caution of today's Hollywood Casino 400. An event uh, that has been rather eventful so far, particularly where the championship is concerned. Jimmy Johnson of note. And Jimmy had gotten back in the pack because of a pit stop and just lost it coming out of turn four, got up into the wall. They made a lot of repairs. He's back out there still in the lead lap. Leading the race when a caution flag came out just after he made a green flag pit stop. That's what's got, him, got what got him behind. And the most recent yellow, trouble in turn two. Landon Castle, Danica Patrick been kind of going at it all day. Looks like Danica gets the worst of it here. And they've got uh, quite a bit of cleanup still to do at this racetrack, so we're still a bit away from the restart. Time for us to go NASCAR nonstop, presented by Ram. Double enough for the restart at Kansas Speedway. The restart that'll come with 105 laps to go. And us appearing to be in one of those situations again where we're right on the bubble of the fuel window. It's almost identical to last week. There was 110 laps to go last week when the uh, leader went their last caution flag pit stop. Here's the reason we were under the caution flag. Danica Patrick and Landon Castle with um, an extended tangle. Well, rule number one of stock car racing is learn how to wreck someone without wrecking yourself. <laughs> yeah. If you yeah, if you're gonna give half paybacks or send a message, then you need to not wreck yourself. For sure. Part of the learning process. All right, couple things housekeeping here. Jamie McMurray back on the lead lap. After losing two laps, took a wave around earlier, got the free pass on this caution, not pitting under the yellow. Mark Martin, Denny Hamlin, Eric Almarola, and Jimmy Johnson. They're in the top four spots. Matt Kenseth, the race leader to the caution, is now in fifth. 
as we go back racing. How do these torn up race cars in third and fourth perform up here in the front? Out Roland Johnson. Three wide. Little sense of urgency on these restarts. Martin, Hamlin, Johnson, Boyer, Kenseth. Now the top five. Check that. That's Almarola sliding in front of Kenseth to get that number five spot. And as they sort it out on the restart, we check in the garage with Dave. Danica drove her car in, climbed from it. Are you okay? And what happened between you and Landon? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, you know, I've just been really frustrated with the 83. Uh, he slammed into me on the front straight for no other reason than his radio communication of she was in the way. And uh, I've always played fair, but if it's one thing, at one time I can imagine frustration, but it's been pretty consistent with him getting into me. So at some point in time, I got to stand up for myself or everybody's going to do it. So. Uh, the bummer is, is that this was my Texas car, that we were having a good run, that we were making the car better, and I'm out of the race, and he's not. You have, uh, this is the final race with Craig, uh, Greg Zipidelli, veteran crew chief. He talked to you for a while afterwards. Any words of wisdom? Be honest. Thanks for being honest. Danica will join us again in Texas. Not with this race car, though. Alan? And Dave, as uh, folks saw while you were interviewing Danica, Tony Stewart went for a slide off of turn number two, running 11th at the time. He needs some new tires on that car, but he's lucky he doesn't need more. Yeah, definitely battling Casey Kane right here. And you can see that situation that we talked about, that inside car coming up out of the corner. You just don't have all the air on the side of the car and on the spoiler. Tony does a great job mm. here. All the tires are blowing out. He still saved that thing. That was incredible. You can see that started as he went back to the throttle and tried to make this pass off the corner. Kind of knew he was in trouble. Did a really nice job not getting into Casey Kane right there and then not hitting the wall. Wow. What I'm fascinated by, watch where he locks the brakes up, when he lets it off to try and get the car moving, when he puts him back on. That's how you guys do that. I, I have no idea. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy just to want to lock it down right there, but then you probably slide into the wall with the left front, mess up the front end. But Tony, as you can see, was working the brake pedal. Looks like Jimmy Johnson's going to pit from about four spot. Yep, with a few others. Dave? Well, when you've got a car wrecked like Jimmy Johnson's was earlier, anytime you can uh, get back in the lead serial as they have, and there's a chance to come in and work on it, take on some fresh tires, you do it. Slight tuning from now. It hasn't been horrible for Jimmy, but not the car it once was. So ninth caution is out, and we've still got 100 laps to go. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series presented by Ram.
Let's see how many laps we get out of the green flag this time. Mark Martin, the race leader, choosing the outside lane. Denny Hamlin is to his inside. Clint and Clint Boyer to his inside. <laughs> Look at Paul Menard to the high side. Put Hamlin in the middle. Being single file. Oh, trouble. trouble. Trevor Bean, Marcus Ambrose. Caution is out. Break. Again. On the break. On the break. Come on down. A rear end damage here. Splitter damage. You need to take it to the garage, Tim. I can't tell. I can't see the back. I don't. I probably should look this up no, before I say it out here. loud, but I'm wondering if there's a full moon tonight. You know how races on your, your Saturday night short track always go a little crazy when there's a full moon? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I don't, I don't know what the answer to this is. I mean, we expected some action. Look at this. Looks like Ambrose just dr drove it down in there. Yeah. Make contact with Logano, and then around it goes. It's just that situation of trying to get everything you can, and they've become kind of comfortable right now with the racetrack and the grooves that they have and the speeds that they're carrying. Well, Jimmy Johnson, I think we said this off the air. I'm not sure we said it on the air, how he got back there, and he just better watch out ahead of him you know a little bit. It, you see it, you see it, you see it. Outside, outside. Good job. Still outside. I wasn't kidding. Yeah, he dogged right Save gas. No takers on pit road among the leaders. Take a break. NASCAR nonstop presented by Ram. Mark Martin, the race leader.
as we come to the green, a topic that may be a little painful for some of the faithful here in Kansas. With one of the best recruiting classes in the nation, John Calipari's Wildcats are reloaded to defend their national championship. Don't miss our exclusive multi-part series coverage of one of the top basketball programs in the country, Kentucky All Access, Wednesdays at 7 on ESPN. Who wants to take me down? What car does he drive? <laughs> at 43 into the wall earlier while leading going back after the lead on Mark Martin oh, oh, and out of round. gathered up here spun off of two guys look like right front one down still spot we stay out of the green safely back around to the pit lane. And Mark Martin now with a little bit of a pad out in front. He was side by side with Almirola off of turn number two. Just once again gets loose on the exit there. You can see great job that they did behind. Let's see Matt Kenseth also got a piece of the wall. All clear. Easy. Keep coming now. Pretty hard hit by the 17 right there. Have not called to keep going. I'm sure that Mark Martin kept waiting for a caution because he knew that something had to happen there. Oh, Biffle into the wall hard in the 16. The hold the break here, begins. Just hold it right to the pit stall. Nice, baby. There you go. I wrecked it bad. Running in third position, and that car just got away, and he hit the wall hard. Now already back in his pit stall. I don't know, I just looked uh, going straight in the wall. I don't know if he overcorrected from a loose situation off the corner and just snapped around. He hit hard. Yep, see it start just getting sideways then, hard into the wall. So one thing about this new configuration, there's not a lot of room to chase the car off turn four when you get to that wall. See how close that was for Clint Boyer. Yeah. Greg Pipple running up near the front. Got a pit road speeding penalty earlier. Went all the way back to 33rd. Came all the way back up front to be running third at that point. And you can see the frustration on his part. He had a shot to win. So pit road going to be open here. We've had so many caution laps since all these front runners were in. Matt Kenseth probably needs to get the right side of that 17 looked at after getting into the wall, but I don't imagine we'll see a lot of takers here, Andy. Well, they pitted with 110 laps to go, and most of them can go maybe 100 or about 55 laps. The doc looks like Matt's going to come in and get his car worked on. Yeah, they talked about doing right sides only, but then Matt said, you know, go ahead and put four on it while you're fixing. We might as well put the left sides on it. Right now, they're going to work on uh, getting the fender pulled away right rear. Kenza said he was watching the 43 spin and just uh, lost it for a second, and that's when he got up in the wall. They are going to come around. Well, they're going to come around and put left sides on now. Take their time. Get the right rear fender pulled away. So, Matt, we'll still have to make one more stop, by the way. You cannot make it from here on fuel. They were hoping to be able to squeeze it to lap 212 and make it but now pulling right front and right rear fender away and left side tires going on guys all right so eventful action after that last restart eric almirola spins off turn two racing for the lead he gets the free pass at this caution matt kenseth also into the outside wall he continued now pits for repairs we go nascar nonstop presented by ram
to Kansas Speedway. If you were expecting drama, we said earlier the yellow might be a popular color. We were not wrong. Jimmy Johnson coming into the day second in points, spun all on his own. Yeah, all by himself, just lost it. No side force, backs that baby in the wall. But they've done some amazing repairs in this car. It's running pretty good right now. He still might be in this thing. He's not the only driver in the chase having issues today. How about Tony Stewart? Another one. Tony had made his way back up through the field, comes off the corner, and once again, no flat tire, no nothing. Just goes around on his own, loses it. And then the reason we're under caution now, our 11th caution of the day, Greg Biffle, just a ton of a hit. Yeah, really fast car, but just gets out from over cracks and runs out of room, gets in the wall really hard. Not exactly what we're used to seeing lately. Cautions have been coming down, except at this newly repaved track. Why are we seeing what we're seeing today? Nicole, Nicole, what's going on right now? Because of the brand new surface out there, the tires have got to be very, very hard to withstand that. The problem is, though, when you have a hard tire, it slides a lot on the asphalt. It creates a lot of heat. The right front air pressure builds. The tire gets real hot. It blows out. This is pretty common. This track needs to get wintered in with all the snow and stuff during the winter. They come back next year to be better. Goodyear needs a soft tire for a couple of steps. Things will be much better when they come back. Expectations for these final 88s? I think we're going to see some more tires go down. I think we're going to see some more spins. But uh, Clint Boyer has been really racy up front. I'm looking at Clint Boyer. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Don't count the 43 out yet. He just got the lucky dog. He's come through the field more than anybody else. Don't count He's him coming. out. Allen, back to green. Here we go. And what will it be this time? And how many laps? The slow car of Greg Biffle just in front of the race leaders as they come by at full speed. And the Biff gets out of the way. Try to just get back up to speed after repairs to his car. Mark Martin leads. Clint Boyer second. Denny Hamlin third. Fourth. 27 Menard trying to ease in front of Casey Kane in the five. Ryan Newman looking for some running room around Kyle Busch. Oh, trouble. Oh, trouble. Into the walls, the 18, and more trouble. Sam Hornis collected. Newman's torn up. And the yellow flag's out again. Get fired up, get a roll in if you can. The points leader Keselowski just barely missed this, too. That happened right in front of Brad. This was a race for seventh place that something funny was going on about halfway down the back straightaway with it and continued right on around through three and four and ends up with a few torn up race cars. And Newman gets in the back of Kyle Busch. He was already loose. Kyle was pretty much all day. But you can see just how close that was for Keselowski. Well, he drove right in between everything that was happening. Half back corner. Right in front wow. here, Philip. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. That was unbelievable. Sometimes you just got to have some luck. Anytime you're going to try to win a championship and go on and win a championship, you have to have some good fortune. And uh, Brad's done some terrific driving, but he's also had some good fortune. You can see that the 22 actually got into him and got him a little bit loose before he got to the 39. Jimmy Johnson made it through again. And an extreme toll being taken by the new Kansas Speedway. Rusty described it very well a minute ago. This racetrack is going to be terrific when the surface ages even just through a winter. Yeah, it'll take some time. It is. The, the tire race hard, just like he said. This racetrack is losing some grip because of all the action throughout this entire week. Man, if we win the championship, just go ahead and save that part right there, that video clip. I hope there was an in-car camera of that. That's a minefield. It's unbelievable. Yeah, we got it for you, Brad. <laughs> Mark the tape. I'm just, I'm just flashing back to the radio we heard earlier with his spotter, Joey Meyer. Before he could even say anything, go high, go low, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
83 to go. Not many takers on the pit lane. And caution out for the 12th time in this race. Some of the best in the business getting all torn up in this one today. Seventh time in this race, drivers running in the top 10 have been involved in accidents at Kansas Speedway in this one. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Kansas is presented by Ram Trucks, Guts Glory Ram, and in part by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. It's going to take a lot of guts if you're going to see the glory of winning this one at Kansas Speedway today. A rough and rugged race. We're under the 12th caution and still got 81 laps to go. That's over 100 miles left in this one. Huge crowd here to watch this race day, and they've certainly got their money's worth. So, before the start of the race today, uh, word went around, and and uh, Rick Hendrick joined us to say that Dale Earnhardt Jr. had been cleared to race in Martinsville next Sunday. Now, hearing that um, maybe there's a change to that picture, Doc. Well, Rick, walked up to me to um, to amend what he said, and Rick, why don't you explain what's going on with Dale Jr.? Yeah, Jerry. Uh, I didn't have all the information as before the race started uh, Monday he's going to be in a closed test that Dr. Petty will attend in the car and then Tuesday he'll have uh, another impact test in Dr. Petty's office and then the decision the final decision be made but all of so far everything's been good and all of the tests have been good and this is the final step when I got the information this past week I was been out here I, I thought we were all done. But uh, then I found out that uh, he was going to have a, a test in the car Monday and Dr. Petty will be there. Then he'll have an evaluation Tuesday in his office and then Dr. Petty will make that decision then. But it looks good. 
So you're anticipating test okay, impact study doesn't change, he should be back in the car. Uh, you should know by Wednesday morning back in the car for Martinsville? Yeah, I think we'll know by Tuesday afternoon, but I'm going to leave it up to Jesse Essex and the PR guys to handle it from here. But, uh, you know, all the, everything's been so good. We're all so optimistic. He's excited about getting back in the car, but these are the steps we have to take. And, you know, those impact tests are important. And I guess being in the car will tell them a lot. And then the test Tuesday. So uh, we're we're expecting him to be cleared. But until Tuesday, we don't have that final word. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Alan? Well, I hate for Mr. Hendrick that uh, he had to come back around and do that. But we appreciate him clarifying the situation. And uh, we look forward to hearing the final outcome on all of that uh, evaluation of Dale Earnhardt Jr. this week and seeing uh, him back in the 88 card. Martinsville next week. Regan Smith subbing in that 88 today. You see the highs and lows on him after a big scare in qualifying. He's raced up into the top 10. Yeah, doing a solid job <laughs> once again in this car. And by the way, one of the few with a clean race car with all its fenders on it. Don't jinx him. I know. Dave? Alan, Kyle Klein from the car under his own power. Kyle, describe the racing in general and then what happened between you and Newman? Every, everything's just on edge. I mean, you're really slipping and sliding and fighting for as much grip as you can find out there. And so, uh, you know, I'd come down the back straightaway. I'd come low a little bit and to protect the bottom just to try to make sure I could keep my, my line down there. I've been losing spots on the top all day. But uh, then Newman just ran up on the back of me and got me loose, which I've been loose all day. And then he ran into the back of me and spun me out. So just impatience. I mean, there's still 80-something laps to go. I don't, I don't know what what that was for or why or whatever but I'm glad he's wrecked along with me and he'll get another one here before the year's out. Sorry you're out. Kyle Busch done for the day. Alan. All right Dave. 79 laps to go. now five restarts that Mark Martin has managed to get away from whoever was lined up to his inside. Now left to race for second, Clint Boyer and Paul Menard, 15 and 27. With well, that inside, it's been tough to try to make a pass on. We've seen some of the best make, trying to make this pass and lose it. Boyer's going to slip back to third. Marcus Ambrose the free pass at that last caution. He's back on the lead lap. Timmy Hill has gotten a free pass. Got 25 cars on the lead lap at this point. And still a lot of racing left to go. You just see Jimmy Johnson going by there. He's trying to make a pass on Kevin Harvick, but pretty amazed at that race car, how, he, how fast he's able to go with it sitting just outside the top 10 right now. Just joining us on the day, we're just shy of 300 miles in the sixth race in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Kansas Speedway repaid and with a little more banking added to it before this race. The speeds are record-breaking in qualifying. The competition has been tough today, and we're one shy of a record for most cautions ever in a Sprint Cup race here. Big stories on the day. The guys that have led the most laps, both Eric Almirola and Jimmy Johnson, both having troubles that have sent them back. Johnson's coming to pit road under the green flag, then a caution coming out, which put him back in traffic. Then he spun out and hit the wall. Jimmy has continued to dig along, and he's in 12th position right now. Brad Keselowski's running in eighth. Denny Hamlin is running in fifth. And so the championship picture, vulnerable, with still so much racing left to go, but certainly the performance of the day Jimmy Johnson's team for keeping this car in the hunt. Running 12 after hitting the wall as hard as he did, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, because they, when it happened and they saw the car, they told him to take it to the garage area. 
Ben Chad was able to get another look at it, said, let's bring it to pit road and see what we can do with it. Yeah, they initially called it the garage, and he said, oh, well, let's, let's look at it, see what we can do. And they did an incredible job, really, of fixing the car. I don't think it's up to full speed, but it's running pretty good. Matt Kenza taking 12th place away, kicking Jimmy back to 13. Another car there, Matt Kenza, who's been into the wall also. He's led a lot of laps here. But he, uh, in trying to dodge uh, Eric Almarola when he was spinning just a little bit earlier, uh, tried to make sure he was getting away, but hit the wall coming off the two, trying to make his way back forward now. Others that have had trouble today, Tony Stewart has spun out. He's still on the lead lap in 17th position. We've seen some guys get caught up in some of the incidents happening around them. And most have still continued on. Denny Hamlin handling problems earlier. Strategy adjustments, track position. Hamlin's now just giving up fifth position there to Casey Kane. And don't count this five car out of this race yet. He has struggled for a big portion of this race. But I've seen him recently have the, this car going in the right direction. That's moving forward. We'll see what their fuel mileage is like. And one of the other big ones, Greg Biffle, who ran so well, had a hard crash a little while earlier. He's taken his car to the garage. We check with Doc. Yeah, Denny Hamlin, guys, last pitted on lap 137. Now, that means uh, if you do any fuel calculations, they got to be getting very, very close. They cannot make it on one more stop, which means uh, what they're trying to do now is go as long as they can go, absolutely to the final lap of the drop of fuel, then come in and pit and hope they get some yellow flags and maybe milk one. But they're going to have to pit probably in a handful of laps, guys. Yeah, I was just uh, using my calculator trying to figure out how far they could go. They would have to go 75 laps in this stint, uh, even though they had a lot of caution flags to make it, and they can, I'm sure they can't do that. And I think Mark Martin's in the exact same boat. Mark Martin leading the race at the moment and a check of the championship picture as they run now. But again, we've got just over 100 miles to go in this race. We're just getting to the three-quarter mark. 12 caution flags. And the story on Mark Martin, the same one we were just talking about with Denny Hamlin. Yeah, that's, uh, good. you see that would be 130 laps to the end of the race. If you split that up and be 65, nobody can do that. So you, you say, okay, they can probably go about 55 laps. That means they would have to go 75 in this segment. Okay, then why haven't they pitted? We've had ample caution opportunities for them to get to pit road. I can't answer that. Maybe you can, Jamie. Well, they're not in the chase, so they're going for it. They're trying to risk everything right now. And Mark just came on the radio and said, guys, I can't shut it off anymore. He's been saving as well as he can. But the guys right now on pit road down here in his pit box putting their helmets on, getting ready. There have been five yellow flags since Mark Martin came to pit road. He got the lead by staying out on one of them back at lap 157. And he's been out in front since. Five yellow flags since then. And they haven't come to the pit lane. And he'd have to run about 11 or 12 more laps before he makes his green flag stop to have a chance of making it to the end. I don't think he can do it. Well, right Mark, now, Mar uh, looks like Paul Menard's catching him pretty quickly, though. When Mark does pit, another lead change. And we take an inside look and get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, brought to you by the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app and truly unlimited data on the Sprint Network. 13 lead changes so far today. Not a lot, but we've had a lot of action. If not the constant changing of the number one spot, get unlimited access to NASCAR with live in-car audio and real-time stats on the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app only from Sprint. Get the app and Sprint's truly unlimited data plan at Sprint.com slash speed. So that 45 to 50 lap fuel window we showed you there a minute ago, there have been 23 laps of yellow since Mark Martin hit it. So that's essentially 50 laps. If you go to the old two to one formula, which may even be selling them short the way these guys shut the cars off and so on these days yeah about two to one is what you can expect even saving as much as you can shutting the car off so that'd give you another what 12 laps onto that yep. still gonna make it awfully tough they'd almost have to make up 20 laps of that I just don't think they can do it at least the 55 of Mark Martin and the 11 of Denny Hamlin hearing from pit road that Denny Hamlin is six laps from pitting and the other aspect on that is as we see Hamlin come by here racing Regan Smith for sixth and seventh. With the frequency of yellow flags today, it's unlikely to expect this race to run green from here to the finish, right? 
That's what I'm thinking. I just don't know how we can do that. We haven't seen it happen, and especially we've had a couple tire issues. We haven't seen a long run since we saw the last one. Uh, so I'm not sure what we'll see here as far as green flag and what you can expect. That's why you're seeing Denny Hamlin and Mark Martin go as far as they can here, hoping to get another caution. And on a day where it's been overcast for much of the day, all of a sudden the sun's starting to pop out here in uh, Kansas City, Kansas. That'll change the handling conditions also. Yeah, like they needed something else. <laughs> to get in their head or under their tires. Yeah. So there are your top five, six, seven, and eight. With 62 laps to go. And we look down on the race leader, Mark Martin, from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. From pit lane to victory lane, every driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Mark Martin, Paul Menard, Clint Boyer, your top three. Expecting to see this 55 car on the pit lane sometime within the next handful of laps. Is there any way he can make five more? He can possibly make it to the end. You know, it's funny because watching Denny Hamlin, I'm curious how much of his lap time here is lack of performance in the car and how much he might be backing off, saving him some fuel. Now, I'm sure they're looking at this and. They could just possibly stretch this. I don't know, I'll tell you how big surprised they can, but I've seen some stranger things this year. There's the hand out the window. Signaling the drivers behind him. So look for Denny Hamlin to slow right here. Mark Truex almost didn't see that. Yeah. 59 laps to go, Doc. Denny Hamlin has gone 71 laps. So you heard all those caution laps Alan was talking about. They'll have to go 58 from here on out. 58 and a half laps. But they think they can do it with very few caution laps. Because Denny does such a great job saving fuel. Four tires. Wait, wait, wait on fuel. He got his full. He's out on the way. Now he'll try to roll the dice and make it all the way to the checkered flag. See, Mark Martin's still out there. He pitted the same time that... Denny Hamlin did. We we saw this team with Clint Boyer win a race last week on fuel monitor. We know they get good mileage. Jamie, when are we gonna see Mark Martin? And they have the wheelman behind the wheel who saved a lot of fuel. Now the guys have had their helmets on for a while. Rodney Childers crew chief just said four laps. That was about three and a half laps ago. So look for him to make his way down shortly. All right. So what you're telling me, it doesn't matter if we have three cautions in a race or if we have double digit cautions, it still comes down to fuel mileage in these races. <laughs> and I'll tell you, Mark Martin can make it back around to his pit stall. I think he can make it from here. On that, on that pit stop, so we'll see. Casey Kane by Clint Boyer for third position, Vince. Since the first two pit stops, when they had to make chassis adjustments on that car because it kept banging on the splitter, they have not touched the chassis on this five car. It has just gotten better and better. Casey says it's a little loose on takeoff, but once this thing gets going, it's been a rocket. They can make it on just one more stop as most of these others can, as you see, Mark Martin has hit pit road. Jamie Little? And they decided to bring him down a little bit early. It's gonna be four tires. Rodney Childers asked this driver, do you want scuffs or stickers? It looks like they have stickers on the wall they're going to go with. It's gonna be nice and smooth. See what he can make out of this race from here on out. Very important not to get busted for speeding on pit road on the exit. Okay, sir, you will. Go, 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 go. All the way, all the way. Trouble, turn four. Car hard in the wall. Eric Almarola. Hey up there, bud. Go ahead and stop. 
Looks like the fire's out. Go ahead and get out. Go ahead and get out. Just Caution stay close out. to the car. Just after Denny Hamlin and Mark Martin pit. This is one of the cars that hit the wall earlier with a right front tire. I don't know what happened here. He looks like he's done now, though. He was running 13th at the time. And boy, what a day. It's just there's some bad feelings as a driver in a in a race car, but not much worse than that. Throttle hanging and blowing a right front tire when you're wide open in the throttle doesn't get much worse. Really good to see this young man out of the car. Just unfortunate. What a fast race car he had all day. Yeah, you see getting the wind of that down while he's got some fire. He's reacting pretty quickly to that fire in the hood. Just be ready to get out. Almirola's led the most laps today. He had a right front down and got into the wall while leading back at lap 122. He spun out, racing Mark Martin for the lead. A spin that didn't bring a caution flag out. And now this, after getting back onto the lead lap, and a hard crash. The pit road is closed. They are bringing the field down the pit lane to allow the safety workers to clean up the big mess that the crash is left in turn four with all the liquid running down from the machine where it came to rest. And so no one supposed to stop in their pit box as they come down the pit lane here. And now really this takes fuel to the finish out of the question for everybody with the timing of this caution flag. Yeah, most everybody can go from here and saw those two cars have pitted under green. They're going to be a lap down. They'll be able to take a wave around when all the cars pit. And it should help them on their issues if they were close enough. Uh, they should be able to get their fuel. Their biggest problem is having to come from so far back now. Mark Martin is going to get the free pass on the caution as the first car lap down. Denny Hamlin, the second car lap down, will have to take the wave around. So that means that Hamlin can't pit under this yellow. And the new Kansas Speedway has set a record for most cautions at this track and most cautions this season. We have just equaled the mark. It has been a, a tough, tough day for a lot of these drivers and teams. Like that one. That was a fast car today, though. Even after he hit the wall the first time, he was up front going for the lead. At one point. Well. For. All of these drivers and teams. Anytime you go to a newly surfaced racetrack. Speeds will be up. And it'll be dicey. On grip. And we have seen. As is not uncommon at new racetracks. Sometimes some problems. At that right front. Fortunately, everyone is okay. All of the drivers involved in those incidents, and Dave Burns has more from the pit lane. Well, and I checked with Goodyear. Uh, a couple comments first. Rusty pointed out earlier the, the greasy conditions. We talked to Kyle after his wreck. Extremely slick out there. And so I checked with Goodyear just to see if there was any pattern they were seeing with their tires. At this point, no. They're seeing a lot of cuts in the tires, regardless of which accident, what time, what caution. Lots of cut, lots of cuts in the tires. So a lot of debris out there. Guys running over a lot of stuff. And so far, that's the only pattern that they're seeing. Vince? Talking about tire wear and uh, Kenny Francis in the uh, five car of Casey Payne. I think you guys have changed the lefts just once today. Have you noticed any issues at all with the, the wear and all the debris that we've had on the track? Yeah, I think we're going to have to uh, change just rights here, too, to st try to stay up front. But um, everybody's going to need all the gas they can get. But, um, you know, you can do it just a little bit faster changing rights only. So 
and hopefully we can have a good pit stop here and uh, make it to the end. Well, you tweaked on the chassis the first couple of stops, so it seems like you've got a pretty good race car. What do you uh, feel like Casey's got in his hands right now? Yeah, it's been handling a lot better uh, the second half of the race. We're just not sure, you know, what two tires are going to do to it, but hopefully it'll be good. Thanks, Kenny. Alan? So the thoughts of uh, Kenny Francis there on the tires, the strategy, and so on that's left to see. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think we've seen these left side tires be very durable all day long, and I don't think it's a problem that Goodyear has with the right side tires. I think it's the teams that are doing things that create problems with those right front tires in these type of situations in trying to make their cars do the things that they want to do. Well, we just talked about new surfaces. You, it, you really lose a lot of margin on that tire. Goodyear can build a lot of margin into these things in a lot of tracks, but when you come to one of these, it's really difficult to do that. And so the margin's very thin. You've got teams out there that are doing everything they can to run fast, and sometimes they'll lean on that one corner of the car and it can cause a problem. Now, I want to point out uh, the wave around of the free pass and so on for Mark Martin and Denny Hamlin. Yes, it's going to get them back on the lead lap, but had things stayed green and the stops all cycled through, they were running up in front. Mark was the leader when he pitted. Now, because of this, they're going to start at the back end of the lead lap cars, and this caution just after they made the green flag pit stops has really cost them a lot of track position. Yeah, it did. It was very untimely, but it's not something unexpected. I think that a lot of people expected to see another caution in that segment, but they had to pit. They were at the very end of their fuel tank. They didn't have a choice. Yeah, there's going to be 22 cars uh, ahead of them uh, at the very least, uh, probably a, a little more than that. But uh, you know, Mark Martin will be able to come down pit road and put on more tires if he wants to do that. Make sure that he's got plenty of fuel just in case of a green-white checkered situation. Uh, Denny Hamlin will not have that option to get take the wave around. He's just going to have to stay out and save the fuel that he has. Pit stops with 49 laps to go, Doc. Paul Menard in, Clint Boyer in. They're both going to go two tires, and they're both said we're going to go two cans of gas. Wait on the crew chief. Wait, wait, wait. Right side tires going on, and they're going to drop them. Let's go down today. Brad Keselowski gives up six position. He will take on four. They'll get the fuel in it. Regan Smith only taking two. Vince. Casey Kane, bottom right of your screen. You heard uh, Kenny Francis say they were going to take right sides only. He reminded the fueler, got a packet full of fuel. A little bit of trouble on the right front. Kane is not left, not yet left the box. They're having some issues, and the 17 of Kenseth was the first one on. And Brad Keselowski getting the four tires. A little play it safe in championship mode there. Yeah, it looks like it, but it's going to cost him a lot of track position. He was sixth entering pit road. We'll see where he winds up after the scoring cycles around off this set of pit stops. So Matt Kenseth first off the pit lane as we work the yellow flag, the 13th yellow of today's race and still got 49 laps to go. Uh, the latest caution flag after a very hard crash for Eric Almarola, who's with Jamie. Yes, what a day it's been. Led 69 laps, more than you led in your entire career, and you were still fast after contact. What happened there? And are you okay? Yeah, we just blew another right front. Um, it was a big hit. I lost my breath there for a minute, so I had to collect my thoughts. But just disappointed. I have never in my entire life had a race car that good. Um, it was so fast and so so easy to drive. Um, all the guys on this farmland, Ford Fusion, did a great job. And we just had a really great race car, and we were here in Farmland's headquarters. We were going to try really hard to make them uh, double their money to Harvester's Food Bank, make them give 100 grand to Harvester's Food Bank if we won, and we were unable to do that, but not for lack of effort. Uh, all the guys worked really hard all weekend. We had a spectacular car, and I hate that it ends like this, but I've always been told you got to give a few away before you can win one, and uh, I feel like we certainly gave one away today. Well, he had a lot to be happy about through today, Alan. Jamie, thanks. A very fast race car and came back from a couple of different instances of trouble, but then uh, a really hard crash, and it's great to see him standing there and okay. Uh, Eric Almarola out of it now. Mark Martin now making that pit stop. After he gets back on the lead lap, he can get the fuel tank top back off. It looks like they're maybe just checking to see if they've got any tire rubs. Just they're going to start at the back of the field, but they will have a full tank of gas. No problem making it to the end, which I don't think anybody will. I think from here, everybody can make it on fuel. The big question is going to be, is it, are we going to see a, a green flag run to the finish? Yeah, that's the big question. Haven't had a ton of that so far today. 
While we work the yellow flag, a reminder, the big O tires, NHRA Nationals qualifying can be seen next weekend, 1.30 a.m. Saturday on ESPN2. And we'll have the final eliminations for you from Vegas, 8 Eastern time next Sunday on ESPN2. And the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues from the paperclip. Martinsville next Sunday, ESPN, 1 Eastern time. The April race there, Jeff Gordon led on a late restart. Clint Boyer went three wide on him. Gordon got bumped and knocked around. His whole season might have looked differently. Ryan Newman won the race. Who knows what's going to happen in the final laps next Sunday. Hope you're with us in Martinsville. Uh, it should be exciting once again. Jimmy Johnson down here, Road. So, you guys, uh, the, the damage earlier did prevent them from fueling as efficiently as they would want to. So, they came back in just to make sure, absolute sure, they've got it full of fuel. Put two left side tires on. They did adjust it for entry into the corners. Jimmy said, please help me a little bit. It's a little free in without taking away the turn in the middle. That's always a dicey move there, Andy. Yeah, <laughs> that's always one of the hard things to do is make it uh, turn while you keep it tight. Race drivers just want it all. Yeah, they want everything. <laughs> Oh, yeah, while wow, we got a deck lid, it's just taped on the back. <laughs> yeah. But just joining us, Jimmy Johnson involved in a, a little turn of events earlier. He was leading, came to pit road for a green flag stop. Caution came out, put him back in the pack, lost control of the car, hit the wall. They've continued to repair things. And Johnson right now is on the lead lap in 23rd place among his fans watching. Angie Harmon on Twitter. And I agree that Pete Crew has too. done an outstanding job getting that car. They certainly have. Is uh, squared away as it can be. A lot of cleanup still being done down in turn four. It gives us a chance to check in with our in-race reporter, Clint Boyer, showing in fifth right now, DJ. Hey, Clint, Dale Jarrett again. You there? Yeah, I got you. I was trying to think of exactly what I'm going to ask, but just your impressions on this day so far. It's been a wild one, hasn't she? <laughs> no, I think I see some raindrops. How about that? We haven't seen that yet today. About, about the only thing we have to see. We have seen a lot, but it uh, looks like you've got a, a race car capable of winning this race. Am I correct on that? Well, I think we just, this bottom line on the restarts keeps killing us, but uh, we'll just keep hanging in there and being smart. Hopefully, we'll prevail at the end of this thing. Okay, Clint. Thanks for talking. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. All right, so as they double up for the restart, you see Clint Boyer there on the inside of row three in fifth position. Things a little chaotic and congested exiting from the pit lane at the end of those last stops. Dang it. Let's see that. I feel like he could have got somebody. Maybe got a few cars more than they were able to win off the pit road. All right, let's set it up. 25 cars on the lead lap. Free pass was Mark Martin. Denny Hamlin and Sam Hornets Jr. took wave arounds. They're 24th and 25th. Brad Keselowski, by taking the four tires on the pit stop, gave up sixth position. He'll restart in 13th here. And the leader will be Matt Kenseth with Tony Stewart, who had a wrench left in the car, leaving pit road earlier in the race. At one point, said to his crew, you need to get your heads out of yeah. back in the game. And now is up there side by side with Matt Kenseth to race for the lead. Yeah, also spun out coming off a of turn two over there. Flattened all the tires but made it back and didn't tear anything up. Here he is trying to win the race. 45 laps to go. Bush. He's trying to make that move again down on the apron. Clint Boyer having none of it. Boyer to block. And Kenseth clears. Paul Menard trying to make up some ground. Lost on the pit stop. Roaring around the outside of turn two in that neon car number 27. He led 110 laps in trying to win the nationwide race yesterday. Ran out of fuel at the end trying to do it. Stewart sliding around, losing some of the ground made up on pit road. Martin Truex Jr. in the 56, trying to get by Tony there for fifth.
I know Tony and his team were trying to get some track position, think that would make it really help them, but their car has had handling issues all day, just putting fuel in there. We'll see how that works out for them. Jeff Gordon, for, uh, 24, Carl Edwards, 99. That's eighth and ninth. Haven't called Carl's number, I don't think, at all today. No, he looked like, and I really thought from practice yesterday, he was going to have a solid day, but uh, just hasn't been there. Right around that 10th position, back to 14th or so. You see all the cars coming off turn four through all that speedy drive. They cleaned it all up. There's some uh, residue still left up there. We see some dust. That shouldn't be any problem for all the cars coming off of that corner. Doesn't look very safe, though, but it is. <laughs> earlier after his incident with Ryan Newman. Newman is back on the track in a repaired number 39. He's 37 laps down in 28th place. So Matt Kenseth, who got into the wall off of turn two earlier while running up front when uh, an incident happened around him, wrinkled up the right side of that 17 car. Now he's back in the number one spot. And here's a challenge for second. Casey Kane on the move. Yeah, I think that said earlier, you're going to have to deal with this five car before the end of this race. He's really making that groove right there work. And this is where Casey Kane likes to run most of the time, keeping momentum up to second now. That was Ryan Newman's car that they went by, the slower car on the apron. Martin's car being really slow down the front straightaway. Denny Hamlin caught him quite a bit as they went down through there and passed him off a two. Here's Kislowski trying to get 10th spot on Joey Logano, championship leader. Right now running ahead of his closest rivals for the title on the track. All except for Clint Boyer, I should say. Still could be a nice game for Brad Kislowski. This hasn't been their best day, but uh, if you can make the most of it, come out of here with a bigger lead than what you had going in. Be a pretty good, solid day, Dave. And DJ, they knew it was going to be another fuel mileage exercise. I talked to Paul Wolf, the crew chief, this morning. Asked him if they made any changes after running Brad out last week at Charlotte at one point. He said, no, it was a matter of the weather getting cold on us and uh, consuming more fuel than we had expected. So he didn't feel like they needed to change anything in their philosophy or their calculations, and they'd be good to go for another run. So, as you might expect, they're good to go till the end of this race. All right, Dave. Certainly there have been a lot of obstacles for all the championship contenders to dodge in this one. And so far, Brad's been pretty successful at dodging them so far. They had one earlier where two cars crashed in front of him off turn four, and he split them and managed to get through untouched. Regan Smith making the most of his drive today at Kansas. In for Dale Jr. in the 8800 car. That's third place he's trying to get. Now you heard Dale Jr. is going to want this car back next week, so he wants to see what he can do with it. Well, he's doing a great job with it, that's for sure. If uh, he hadn't opened people's eyes before, days like today certainly will. From 39th to 4th at the moment, Dave, for this 88 car. Yeah, but you described it earlier, Alan, a very loose race car in qualifying. Put him back there for the beginning. Crew Chief Steve Letarte just told him, push the button, go for it. So if we had any concerns about them running the final few laps uh, without stopping again for fuel, there are none. Crew Chief wants him to go. Mentioned a little bit ago, Mark Martin getting bypassed by Denny Hamlin and a few others. His 55 car looks like he's down on power. Yeah, it looked like that, but uh, now I've seen the last few laps that the car seems to maybe come back. So I don't know if that could have been a battery or something like that. Yeah, the motor's down on the cylinder. Yeah, Mark's definitely got a problem. It seems like it's come back. The speed has come back a little. So Mark Martin leading this race a little while ago, made a pit stop from the lead. Then the caution came out, got the free pass, got back on the lead lap, but does not look to be in shape to make any progress toward the front. There are Jimmy Johnson and Denny Hamlin. Now, I just saw Denny Hamlin get passed by Jimmy Johnson. I'm not sure that Denny Hamlin's not pedaling his car a little bit. 
because he was not able to make a pit stop. He made that green flag stop and has quite a few laps to go to make it on that tank. I think he has to be. He's one of the few cars, if not the only car, that has to be in fuel conservation right now. Keep an eye on Hamlin and see where things go in this 11 as they look to try and make it to the finish. And again, with the frequency of the caution flags today, it would surprise no one if we see another yellow flag. Oh, there it is, right there. 22 car, caution. Sam Hornish Jr. Right side, sir, guys, right side, see blue tire. You can see the damage he already had from an earlier incident. Yeah, I'm sure this tire failure probably from a tire rub. You can see that right front destroyed the fender. They taped it up. Sam running 24th. He had just taken a wave around at that last caution to come back onto the lead lap. He had the garage. Oh, boy. Oh. Just glad we have these safer barriers these days for these wrong tires. Still a hard impact for these drivers, but much safer issue for them. Sam had some damage when he was collected in an incident earlier. Yeah, Ryan Newman and Kyle Busch got together and he got into the back of Newman then trying to avoid it. Caused all that damage, well, caused the earlier damage on the right front of the car. Now, obviously, a whole lot more. Andy, you were just talking about Denny Hamlin pedaling that now that he's in this situation, does he come get some tires, put fuel in this? Oh, absolutely. I think he comes in now and gets tires and fuel. He's not going to give up many spots either. He's 18th. If he comes in, I think everybody else behind him probably will too. I think it's uh, pretty much a no-brainer for him to come in. I don't wonder what's going on with Mark Martin, though. He's sitting there 20. I'm not sure what was wrong with his car. Pit road open here. Sure looks like Hamlin's crew is ready to go to work, huh? Sure looks like Truex's crew is not. David Reagan, free pass on the yellow flag. That'll give us 25 cars on the lead lap. And uh, we will see if we have any takers here on the pit lane. Denny Hamlin's going to be the one. Mark Martin also. And now a couple in front of them. McMurray and Montoya. And indeed Hamlin in, Doc. And you guys are exactly on it, Andy. Uh, nothing to lose by coming in now. They're going to be really, really close on field. They're going to go ahead and put four tires on it and try to uh, free them up just a little bit here. Right rear chassis adjustment. Left side tires going on. Still got to get it full of fuel because they worry about green, white, checkered. With everything that's happened today, they can run a bunch of extra laps here before the checkered wave. He's away. Is see Mark Martin's car, uh, team going under the hood of the car trying to find out what the problem was. 14th caution out in Kansas. Keep an eye on this situation in NASCAR nonstop, presented by Ram.
coming to the restart with will be with what will be 28 laps to go. And Matt Kenseth with Paul Menard to his inside for the restart. Casey Kane now back in sixth position. Lost some spots under the caution flag. More on that in a minute. in a spot off turn four. Kane tried to charge, make up a little ground on the restart, but Tony Stewart, aggressive since they waved this green flag. Yeah, Smoke went to the apron, picked up a few spots there. I think he can be aggressive, but he can't hold off this five car. He's too fast. He's giving it a go, though. So Stewart to fourth, came to fifth with Boyer and Smith right behind him. I mentioned Kane losing some positions under the caution flag. He was running second at the yellow. And as Vince Welch reported to us from Pit Road during the commercial break, he was shutting the car off to save fuel, had trouble getting the car to reignite right away. And NASCAR has a rule about maintaining pace by the time he got it to refire. Four other cars had passed him, and he found himself back in sixth. And now he's trying to make some of those spots up. That's just another huge mistake by this race team, and I know that what he was trying to do, it seemed like they would have had plenty of fuel, but uh, in, in an effort in case, I guess, a green-white checker, they, uh, just nothing's going right in this chase, really, for this five team. There are a lot of teams today that they could say nothing's gone right <laughs> for them. And a lot of teams that have had to overcome troubles during the course of this race to be in contention to win. Keynes would certainly be one of those. The car very ill handling earlier in the race. And then after they got that straightened out, this latest problem that's left him some ground to make up. That sucks that did that. I'm done saving fuel. 10-4. This is, we need to fix this. Like, sorry about that, man. That ain't your fault. Okay, we'll do it from here. Yeah, that's got to be frustrating. You, you shut the car off trying to say, if you don't really need to, they're just doing it for insurance. And then finally now they're saying, okay, just no more of that. Can't afford to lose any more spots, especially in the caution. Well, the way this thing is gone today, certainly reasonable to expect we might go a little overtime in this one. Yeah, see, Martin Truex there in second. Uh, could this be a little redemption? He looked like after dominating the race here back in April that he was going to get a victory for this team. Got himself in a position to make up for that and go to victory lane here today. Led 173 laps in the April race. Passed by Denny Hamlin with 31 to go. And had to settle for second. Said that race broke our hearts. He's got some making up to do, though, because right now, Matt Kenseth has set sail. I guess nobody told him that everybody else had led, had problems and hit the wall or something, but... He doesn't seem to be concerned with that right now. Nope. So there's your leader, Matt Kenseth. Truex, Menard, Stewart, Kane, the top five. Boyer, Smith, Gordon through eighth. And then Brad Keselowski running in ninth. Kevin Harvick, 10th. Jimmy Johnson running in the 11th position. Behind Johnson. Kurt Busch, Marcos Ambrose, and then Denny Hamlin. Stories on the day, the crash for Johnson earlier. When he got trapped by a make it a green flag pit stop and then the yellow came out, he was back in traffic, he spun out, he hit the wall, and he's come back from that. That was back at lap 135 when Johnson hit the wall running in 20th. He's worked his way back. Denny Hamlin, same, getting trapped just after making a green flag pit stop. Instead of the cycle of stops working through and him being somewhere up in the top six or seven, he was way back in 23rd position for the restart. Uh, check at 24th position after having to take a wave around, and he's got some ground to make up. How about Jimmy Johnson coming now, getting his car back in the top ten, one spot behind 
points leader Brad Keselowski right now. It's just incredible what they've done to this car and the drive that Jimmy has in getting back into the top 10 when it looked like they were going to be relegated to a finish certainly outside the top 20. I think he's fast enough to actually go up and drive by Brad Keselowski. He's been a couple tenths quicker here in this run. Now for all they've been through today, our Goodyear Superior performer, Jimmy Johnson and his team. What an effort. If they win this championship, this will be a day to write down and make note of. Yeah, they were talking about having to come in. They were going to need a deck lid for it and all kinds of things. I really didn't think they were going to be able to fuel this car, anything else. But, uh, Dave, they made the repairs and got him in the top ten now. The rolling roll of tape speeds on, and Jimmy Johnson is able to control it. That fuel question shouldn't be a problem. Remember, they came in and put packed it full of fuel at the very end. But it was interesting talking to Chad Knaus this morning. We thought it was going to be a hot and sunny day versus the days we had had previous. So we talked about the unknown, the unexpected. I said, you like that kind of challenge? He goes, yeah, and I think our team really responds well. Well, guess what? They've been challenged today, and they've come through. Yes and yes. They have been challenged and they have come through. Well, I think they'll probably look at it in two ways. They, they're going to have missed an opportunity to take this points lead away with a fast race car from the two. But they also have avoided disaster in the same day. There are the championship standings. Basically identical first to second as they were to start the day. With Kozlowski running in ninth position, Jimmy running in tenth. Jimmy has led today. Brad has not. So the bonus point to Johnson for leading a lap. Just thinking back how after the end of the Charlotte race last week when Kozlowski and his group really gave away points for the first time in this championship and the kind of the swagger or the confidence that they've had going through this for the first time, if that would change any. Certainly doesn't seem to have. Brad said he looked forward to coming here and showing everybody what they're really all about as a team. And then Jimmy saying, you know, it's been a really competitive chase and I'm having a lot of fun racing the 11 and 2. And I'm really looking forward to pouring the pressure on now. Here's Jimmy here on Friday. I was wondering how much Brad was going to put up with the blocking that the 24 did down the back straightaway, but uh, he kept his head about him. And now you can see Jimmy's going to make the pass on Gordon, it looks like. But. Uh, Brad just decided to go ahead and pass him, and looks like Gordon's starting to struggle a little bit right now. All this going on well behind Matt Kenseth, the race leader, who's opened up a two-second advantage on second place, Martin Truex Jr. There isn't anyone in this field that's had a trouble-free day, I don't think, so far today, including the man who's got that healthy lead right now, Matt Kenseth. Tony Stewart, Casey Kane, swapping fourth and fifth positions. Tony overcoming a pit penalty earlier for leaving with an adjustment wrench still in the back windshield of that car. A spin out off turn number two where somehow he didn't hit anything. Casey Kane last lap was he was the quickest car on the track. Actually about a tenth of a second quicker than the leader. And if you weren't with us earlier in the race on that five car, the first 10 laps after a restart, that five car just was so ill handled in case he would give up spots and then spend the rest of the run trying to make up what he'd given up. Jimmy Johnson around Jeff Gordon. That's ninth position for Johnson. As we work now to the final 10 laps of this race. Kurt Busch just scraped the wall in the 78. He may have a and is this going to leave anything behind it? Coming in. There will be no yellow. Right front flat. Another driver having a frustrating day. And there have been many here today. There's a 78. Mm. It looked like just one of those where the tire was going down, didn't really blow out. You can see the right front is down on it, though, but unfortunate for Kurt in this race team.
So Matt Kenzer. You see the band-aids hanging off the back bumper of that 17 car. It was earlier when Matt Kenseth got into the outside wall. Back at uh, lap number 173, Al Eric Almirola spun in front of him, racing for the lead. In the jam up, Matt got into the outside wall with the right side of that car. He had to give up a lot of track position, pitting under a subsequent caution at lap 177 and went all the way to 24th place. Just still amazed at how durable these race cars can be. I mean, that was a hard hit that Matt Kenseth did coming off. He was full throttle off the of turn two. Slammed the right side. We saw Eric Almirola earlier after hitting the wall. So uh, cars were really tough. But Matt Kenseth and his race team, who could have just, you know, they're out of the chase, basically or out of the chance for a uh, chance to win the championship, but uh, have continued to, to work hard and got Matt out front. Martin Truex Jr., not a factor at the very front of the pack for a lot of the day, but now late in the race, has worked his way up to second. If he gets another caution, maybe he'll have a shot at the one that got away from him back in April here. Six laps to go. And we expected to see a ton of torn up sheet metal next week at Martinsville. I don't know if we expected to see what we saw today. That's a gap from first to second has uh, shrunk a little bit here in these last several laps. As you look at Paul Menard, very solid today in third. Yeah, Slugger Labby making his comeback today uh, on top of the box after the suspension, and it looks like it's made a big difference with the team. Having a solid, solid run today. And he's got a fast closing Casey Kane coming at him right now. There's the story on Casey on the day. And again, the really big story, he had just gotten to second place at that last caution. And the hiccup trying to get the car refired after shutting it down to save fuel. It dropped him back to sixth. Yeah, don't know if he would have had anything for Kenseth, but that certainly took any opportunity that he had in, in trying to work his way up there and, and see if he could battle Matt Kenseth. I think they'll look back on that and think that they let one get away because he has been solidly the fastest car on the track probably the last seven or eight, ten laps. If he hadn't given up those spots, he'd be working on Matt Kenseth right now. Well, certainly the conversation around Matt Kenseth entering the championship was whether a driver and team going their separate ways at the end of the championship could keep it together enough. The information would continue to flow to compete for the title. Really, it hasn't been about their competitiveness or that information flow. It's been about luck and circumstance that have taken Kenseth out of the opportunity to run for the title. That 35th place finish at Dover really dropped them way back. Dover, one of his better tracks. They came back the next week to win at Talladega. But some 67 points behind starting the day, it was going to be too far and too much for Kenseth to overcome. That said, if this holds out for another two laps, they're going to have won two of these races in the chase. And I know for some of the guys inside Roush Fenway Racing, particularly Robbie Reiser, it really gets under their skin when people talked about the lame duck and would they continue to give Matt their all. Well, Matt's a, been a favorite over there. He, he's a really good people person. He cares about the organization, and he's just a tremendous competitor, and you can see that happening. And the white flag is up. We're in the last lap today at Kansas, a race that's featured 14 cautions. A very tough toll on car and driver. Many, many rallies on the day, including this 17 from as far as 24th in the pack. Final corners here for Matt. Checkered flag is up. Third win of the season, second of the chase. Matt Kenseth wins at Kansas. Oh, Brad Keselowski finishes eighth, Jimmy Johnson ninth, Denny Hamlin 13th. As we wrap up the sixth race in the chase and head to Martinsville with four to go, it'll be seven points between Keselowski and Johnson. Denny Hamlin losing a little ground today. Yeah, Clint Boyer with another solid effort. Uh, six, I know he wanted to do better than that in his home state. But uh, Boyer's only going to be 25 back. 
Yeah, he does do a great job. But I'm so impressed with Jimmy Johnson's team and how they kept him in this without losing a ton of points. So he keep, they keep him in the championship chase, and it's uh, four to go. <laughs> never gets old, does it, Dale? Never gets old. I don't care how many times you do it, and you never know when that last is going to be there, so enjoy it whenever it happens. I think he's got a lot more coming, but... That's the same Mark Martin always said. He always enjoyed every win because you never know when the next one's coming. So, a race that took a lot longer than normal here at Kansas today because of 14 caution flags. And now leaves us four races to go to decide who will be the champion this year. Next week, Martinsville, the final short track race of the season. And Texas Phoenix to the finale in Homestead, Miami. Join us at the track. NASCAR.com slash tickets. Never know what you're going to see. Who would have thought this one would have played out the way it did? <laughs> Not me. At Martinsville, anything can happen. Yes, sir. And that car finished in the top ten. Yeah. Yeah. Your championship leader there, Keslowski, probably had one of the cleaner races on the day and came up with eighth place money. While we wait for Kenseth to get around to victory lane, let's talk to some of the finishers, uh, the top finishers today, Vince. Casey Kane finishes fourth, but I know it's got to be frustrating. You were sitting second during that yellow. You turned the car off to save some fuel. And what happened? It just wouldn't refire? Yeah, it just wouldn't refire. Um, disappointing, but uh, we, we got through there. We, you know, we had a good car. We came back to fourth, and we passed a lot of cars there. The Farms Insurance Chevrolet, the team did an awesome job. Great pit stops, great pit calls. I mean, this was a, a lot of tire and fuel strategy race throughout, and uh, our guys did a really nice job. So I had it. I had an awesome car. It's a little loose there, taking off. It's coming to me. We we're getting really good there at the end, and uh, just weren't close enough at that point in time. But still, a solid day. Fast indeed. Fourth for Casey today, Dave. And Jimmy Johnson looking over the back of his car now with his crew. They're talking about what happened today. How in the world did you drive this thing back to a top ten finish, Jimmy? I had to get a look at it here. It, uh, it's pretty tore up. Um, you know, definitely proud of this team and the fact that we. Uh, we never give up and we'll continue to fight and uh, try to get every point that we can. I think yesterday's nationwide race showed that uh, this thing isn't over until the checker flag falls on any given Sunday. So all that said, I'm very proud but also disappointed. Um, you know, I crashed the car, spun out trying to uh, get inside the 56. He bobbled a little in front of me and I thought that was an opportunity to jump in the gas real hard. And uh, when I did that, my car took off and I couldn't catch it. So um, all in all, good day, but could have been a lot better. I think we could be in victory lane and, and stretched uh, some points on these guys. Great recovery. Hey, next week they're going to a place where they've been to victory lane a lot. Martinsville coming up, Alan. Dave, thanks. And again, uh, I mentioned it earlier, but a look for you at those championship standings with four races to go. Played to a draw today between Keselowski and Johnson. Well, it was a really tough day, though. It was one of those, those races you just try to survive. We saw a lot of close, hard racing and a lot of fast cars. Yeah, Denny Hammond had a tough week here. Uh, comes out of here 20 points back, but going to a racetrack where he's done awfully well at too in Martinsville. Hamlin losing five points today. Clint Boyer gaining three as we head on to Martinsville next week. Jamie? Brad Kozlowski, of course, checking out the points. Got out of the car. Big sigh of relief. What was that race like from your perspective? You guys were back. You were forward. Mixed up the strategy. I, th I don't even know how to explain it. I'm just... I'm ready to go home and, and have a couple beers. <laughs> it's just a long day. And, uh, uh, you know, everybody's been asking all season long where the caution's been. Well, they're using the answer. They, uh, they flew to Kansas. They've been hanging out here uh, because there was caution after caution. And it seemed like every wreck that happened today happened right in front of me. So uh, glad to survive the carnage and, and brought back a decent car with Miller Lite Dodgers in, you know, okay shape um, and dodged a, a bolt of a race. Uh, that's the, the only thing I can use to describe it. But, uh, Whew, just a, a tough day. All right. Great day for Brad Keselowski. Brings it home eighth, Alan. All right, Jamie. And meanwhile, in Victory Lane, Matt Kenseth is there ready to celebrate. We go to Victory Lane, presented by Tire Rack. Matt Kenseth getting ready to climb out here. And folks, listen in. This crew loves their drive.
95 laps ago, he was on pit road getting the fenders pulled out. He began to apologize and apologized all the way to the checkered flag. And they said, you don't need to apologize anymore. Matt, 14 years at this race team, and in a few weeks you're going to be gone. What does this mean to you? These guys obviously care so much about you. Yeah, I mean, it really means a lot. Um, I don't want to get too emotional about Killian, but uh, first of all, I just really honestly, that's not going to work, is it? I just, uh, I really got to thank God and all the opportunities that he's put in front of me and all the guidance that he's given me through uh, pretty much my whole life, not just um, not just all this going on. So I really want to thank Jack Roush, Robbie Reiser, Mark Martin. Without them guys, I would have never been at Roush Fenway Racing. And uh, thanks to Zest Sprint, um, fifth third. Ford, uh, Battle and Gatorade Citizen, all our sponsors, and also a big thank you, Doug Yates and Engine Guys. Uh, you know, without all that power on restarts and to clear them guys, uh, would have made my job a lot harder. You can see what this means to him. He's leaving this team, but he cares so much. Nicole? Do not call Matt Kenseth a lame duck driver, and do not say that this championship is over. Four to go in just seven points between our top two drivers. Brad Keselowski leads the way over Jimmy Johnson, the five-time champion compared to a one-time champion but in the Nationwide Series. Next week, it's Martinsville, 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN Sunday. Next up, it's Sports Center with more coverage from right here in Kansas. Congrats once again to Matt Kenseth, his second win of the chase.